Robert Kent is one of the better quarterbacks in this league. He's top three in everything that you judge a quarterback on. Um, he has the experience. He has the big arm. He has the know with all that you, you're not going to fool him. He's one of those type quarterbacks. Um, and then you also you add, you know, Dominique Carson, who was up for the MVP, offensive player of the year, a very dynamic ball player, can run in, catch with it, as well as kick return. And then you look how big that offensive line is um, with Robert Griffin from University of Baylor. Um, they and Dent and, and Bishop, those guys up front are very big, very talented, very physical, as well as their veteran ball players as well. Um, their receiving core, all of them have experience. They don't really have any young guys there. And then you have Solo, who was, I think he was MVP in 2017. So when you have guys like that on offense, you're going to score points. You're going to put up numbers in rapid proportions. And then defensively, um, to have the different guys that they have back there, the, the, the key one that I'm looking at is, you know, Frankie Solomon. Yeah. All the wars I've went with against him, um, just a pleasure to compete against him on that field. I mean, he has over, you know, 50 interceptions uh, on that on, uh, in his career. Um, you know, have Brandon Jenkins, who's another good defensive lineman that played with um, Omaha last year, and I remember going against him my many years in the IFL. So they definitely have talent all over the field. Um, and it's not going to be easy. I know that for sure. This is going to be a great test for us moving forward for the rest of the year. What are your keys to success tonight for the Liberty? Well, it's turnovers. Turnovers is one. Um, We've got to win the turnover game. And then the other one, we have to improve on special teams because, I mean, Carson can change a game in, in a heartbeat. So we definitely got to understand what we're trying to do and execute the game plan. Coach Ron O'Neill, his Liberty back at home tonight. It's game number three of the 2019 season against the Texas Revolution. Coach, best of luck to you. We'll talk to you at halftime. All righty. Thanks again. Back with more pregame after this on KINA. Comfort, heating and air. Rely on the company that cares. It's spring cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean and check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters for you. Follow us on social media for your chance to win a free clean and check appointment today. Exciting memories of a lifetime ultimate entertainment for children of all ages. It's the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Three Ring Circus. Wild animals, acrobatics, tightrope walkers, clowns, all included in six jaw-dropping performances. Shows April 12th at 2 and 7, Saturday, April 13th at 10, 2 and 7, and the 14th at 2. Fans tickets on sale now at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Come one, come all to the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Circus, the biggest and best circus in town. Salina Power Sports is Salina's fun authority. Serving Central Kansas since 1988, Salina Power Sports features a full line of Mahindra rocks or utility vehicles, Arctic Cat and CF Moto off-road ATVs and side-by-sides, and Hustler, Big Dog, Spartan, and Honda Mowers. Need service? The pros at Salina Power Sports work on all major brands of ATVs, side-by-sides, motorcycles, and even Sea-Doo watercraft. Need parts? From batteries, tires, and engine parts to belts and hoses, if you need it, these guys can get it. That's Salina Power Sports, 632 South Broadway. Salina Used Cars presents a new way to drive. The smart folks at Salina Used Cars are always working to put you in more car for less money. Twice the selection with two lots, and now they bring you a new leasing option. It's the smarter way to drive. Pick the quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV you love and build equity faster. Avoid trading and resale risks and avoid costly repairs if something goes wrong. WACC dealer for details. Stop by their two lots in Salina just off the corner of Crawford in Ohio or visit online at SalinaUsedCars.com. When you hire street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street plumbing, heating, and electric. Know them better at streetphe.com.
Area athletes and even weekend warriors have a big home field advantage. Salina Regionals Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. Working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries or to heal through surgery and rehabilitation. You can count on Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Timothy Hawks and sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle. Along with an A-team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists, Salina Lina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. So Lina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at SalinaRegionalSportsMedicine.com. A1 Plumbing Services, a proud supporter of the Salina Liberty football team. A1 Plumbing makes your life easy. Competitive rates and quick response times, plus all work, including labor and parts, are guaranteed. A1 Plumbing is open to service 24 hours a day. New construction and remodeling are just the beginning of the many services master plumber Chris Bogan and his team perform. Save time and money with sewer camera service. Don't wait. Call A1 Plumbing, 827-4888. That's 827-4888. Ready. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Welcome back into Tony's Pizza Event Center. Countdown to kickoff brought to you by Comfort Heating and Air in Salina. Check them out on Facebook. Get a deal now. Get that air conditioner all souped up and ready to go. Russ, it's that time of year in the state of Kansas. You're going to see some heat anytime, and it's also time to welcome in our neighbors from Texas, the Texas Revolution. Two straight road trips into Kansas for the Revolution. Last Saturday night, they were in Wichita to play the Wichita Force. They were able to defeat the Force, a game in which they led the whole way, 47-37 to the final score. They go back just outside of Allen, Texas, and then come back up to Salina this week. How much does that wear on you, being on the road, back-to-back weeks, taking that road trip? It's got to wear on you more than you would think. Uh you got a, a trip from from outside of Allen up to Wichita, and then you go back and come back, you know, less than seven days. You know, coming up probably last night with a long drive, and then coming back here, you would think you would you would have some wear, but these guys are are in phenomenal shape. So we'll just ha- we'll have to see if that plays a factor in the outcome of the game. Big Sam Pretty producing and engineering tonight's broadcast of indoor football. Devin Haney along with Russ Kossler in the booth. Let's go down to the field to Brian Burner for the first time. And, Brian, not everybody made that road trip for the Texas Revolution. Yeah, they're going to be without uh, Dwayne Autry, who a lot of people in Salina know, former Bethany College Swede. But uh, more importantly, their head coach is in here. Apparently there was some altercation at uh, towards the end of the game down in Wichita last week. And we, we've heard... Uh, Four or five game suspension, not sure what, but uh, we do know both those guys are going to be without from the Revolution for the next month. Texas just with their first game last week against the Wichita Force. They start out the season here with two games on the road here tonight against the Liberty. Got their first win of the season last week against the Sioux City Bandits. That was a game in which the Liberty won 65 to 45. Turnover battles, you're going to hear Peron O'Neill say that all year long. You have to win the turnover battles. Liberty did not win the turnover battle in week number one against the Amarillo Venom on the road. They certainly won it last week, four to nothing. They took three fumbles and an interception from Winston Green. Did the Liberty defense away from the Sioux City Bandits on their way to scoring 65 points and winning 65 to 45. And it will be that Liberty defense that we will see out on the field to start this game. They will be kicking away back deep to a familiar face in Dominic Carson, the five foot five running back back in the building. He was the offensive player of the year last year in Champions Indoor Football. Back along with him will be a former Baylor wide receiver in Wesley Harris. They will stand just inside of their own 10 yard line and wait on this offering from Jimmy Allen. Glad you could join us tonight, wherever you may be listening, whether it's on KINA, 910 AM, 107.5 FM, online at Salina Post, or Welcome into our viewers and our listeners on Pluto TV along Champions Indoor Football Video Network. Jimmy Allen with his hand in the air, and he is ready to kick it away. Liberty wearing their dark blue jerseys, dark blue helmets, Revolution in their black pants, and their white jerseys. 
with red, white, and blue trim. Here is Harris, zigzagging his way, starts out left, comes back right, gets to the midfield stripe, and he will come across midfield and land on the five that designates the 25-yard line at midfield. And now that Liberty defense will come out for the first time to start this game. They are led by Jake Latimer, the former Iowa State Cyclone last week, had a huge week, three tackles for a loss, also a quarterback sack. He single-handedly led this Liberty defense as a wrecking crew against that banded offense. Went down on the field and spoke to him a little bit after the game, and probably 10 minutes after the game was over, he was still gassed. He left everything out on the field last week, and as we sit up here and watch and look for big things out of number 44 tonight. In the middle, along with Jake Latimer, will be Javier, Javier Dyer, excuse me. Also, Travis Taylor. Here's the run to Carson. They try to sprint it out to the right-hand side, and right away, making an impact in this game is Dontre Matthews, d -Tray. Coming in, making the tackle, holds Carson for a gain of one. And Dominic Carson in his first game as a revolution running back, Russ, did not have the impact that you would expect. In the return game he did last week against Wichita, but was held for about 30 yards rushing, no touchdowns on 11 carries. Yeah, coming off being the player of the year, you expect to see a heavy dose of Dominic Carson's as we've seen him a lot lately. Dominic Carson, the lone setback, two wide receivers on the left-hand side for the Revolution. Back to pass, and a fumble. They coughed it up to the Revolution in the middle of a defensive lineman sandwich. In there was Latimer and Travis Taylor. They came on the edges and wrecked the quarterback, Robert Kent Jr. He coughed it up. The ball fell forward, and then it was picked up for an advantage for the Revolution to the 21-yard line. They're going to gain two yards out of this play, but immediately we see the impact of Taylor and Latimer on the edges. We saw Salina with a, a two linebacker set last week with a heavy dose of the run game. We won't expect to see so much, so expect to see Taylor coming on the edge. Chris Mays, the former Georgia Bulldog, in the middle of that line. Here they come again. Latimer up high, rips off the helmet of Robert Kinn as he tried to duck around him. The helmet goes rolling. The football nearly came out, and Jake Latimer, along with Travis Taylor, come in, and they throw Robert Kent for a loss on the other side of the midfield stripe back to the 20-yard line. And that helmet is going to be real incidental contact, Brian, on the field. You had a really good look at that. Yeah, you, you called it out, you know, before we even went on the air. What we wanted to see was Salina being able to get pressure from both ends coming in. Taylor, along with Latimer, two plays in a row, they've done that. A lot of that credit goes to Brock Long with the presence of him up the middle. Fourth and 17. Here's Kent, back to pass, looking to the end zone. It's going to be caught for a touchdown. All of that bad stuff that just happened to the Revolution and Robert Kent has just been nullified as he went down the field over 30 yards and found a receiver in the end zone for a touchdown. All of that work that the Liberty defense just did, Russ goes for nothing. Yeah, you, you come up with three huge plays there on, on first, second, third down, getting pressure on the quarterback, and he drops back and had no pressure and just let it fly. A tough, a tough start for the secondary already. Looked like Wesley Harris, the re wide receiver from Baylor, who was in the end zone that made that leaping catch. Couldn't see who was on coverage for the Liberty. And now the kick is blocked. Here's a block by Taylor. The football is loose, and it's rolling out towards midfield. There's a scrum after it. It's going to be a dead ball coming in, blocking that kick for the Liberty. And Travis Taylor, Jake Latimer, mixing it up on the edges. If that's the way this game is going to go, I realize Brian Berner, the Revolution, got a touchdown out of that. But it's going to be a long night for this Revolution offense if they can't do something with Latimer and Taylor. Yeah, those guys were just everywhere on that possession. And, and again... It's, a, it's the pressure that they're getting from that outside. I see a lot of that uh, keen, though, from that linebacker, Brock Long, in that position in that box. They're concerned. Can he make that one play to get into that uh, interior straight up the gut to where they're leaving those uh, edges so vulnerable? Great play on, two, on second and third down, and then again on that point after. We see a lot of times that extra point miss could come back in decision making later in the contest. Revolution take the lead on the opening drive. They're up six to nothing after the extra point attempt was blocked by Travis Taylor. A good defensive series for Salina, but the Revolution still come away with a touchdown. Other games going on tonight in Champions Indoor Football. The Wichita Force on the road in Enid to take on the expansion Oklahoma Flying Aces and also 
Highway 29 rivalry going on tonight as Omaha is in Tyson Event Center to take on the Sioux City Bandits. That'll be an interesting game that we'll keep an eye on as we go through this evening here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, a 6.30 kick as it always is here in Salina. A little bit head start on those other games. Ready to kick it away now for the revolution is Brad Dunavant. It's going to be taken by Brooks. Tracy has some room to the 20, to the 15, 10. Rolls over the kicker, Dunavant, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Liberty. Didn't take long for Tracy Brooks and the Liberty to answer. 12.42 left to go here in the first quarter, and Tracy Brooks has the first kick return for a touchdown on the season for the Salina Liberty. The first time I think we have seen Tracy Brooks not back deep in the end zone. He was up about the 10, 12 yard line and just picked it up off of, I had a great hop for him and an excellent, excellent pancake block by number 11, Matthew Craig. I talk about him a lot. He's one of my favorite guys and he just had an excellent block to free Tracy to get around the edge. So now the extra point, which here early on could be the difference. Tracy Brooks on for the hold. Placement is down, and Jimmy Allen's kick is up and good. It's the first time in three games Jimmy Allen has made his first extra point attempt of the night, and right now that's made the difference in this game. Brian, we're off to a very quick start in this one, and I think all of us probably expected this. There's going to be a lot of scoring tonight, we think. Yeah, there, there's probably going to be. Both of these offenses have the ability to be very explosive. I want to go back to one thing on both of those kickoffs that, that you'll notice both on the opening kickoff with Texas and then with Tracy Brooks at Salina. The back came up and cleanly was able to gain possession in a very fast manner. That's something that we had not seen in previous games on that kickoff off the bounce. They'd be fumbling it around. Being able to get that clean, momentum was going and they were just able to outrun the coverage. So as everybody tries to catch their breath, now we go back to where we just started the game. It'll be Harris and Dominic Carson back deep for the Revolution. The Liberty will be kicking it off with Jimmy Allen. The only difference is we have 13 more points than what we did just a little bit over two minutes ago. Yeah, we're off to a blistering pace here. You know, the kicking game has been a struggle, was a struggle last week. Special teams were a struggle for, for Salina, and so far on the, on the kickoff game and the return game, so far so good. Here's the kick by Allen. It's going to be deep all the way to the wall. Carson will bounce off the wall, then he comes out. He's to the five, makes a move to the ten. Here comes the water bug, Dominic Carson, across midfield. Nobody's going to catch him, and he goes over the kicker, Jimmy Allen, who makes a tackle at the one-yard line. He is looking for the Brian Burner special teams <laughs> award of the night as the kicker saves a touchdown at the one-yard line. I gave Jimmy a bad time before the game. We gave up that opening kickoff for a touchdown last week. I go, where were you making that stop? He said, if I get him going the right direction, I'll get him. That time he was able to. You know, this is one thing we look at last year. Salina would kind of bend, allow teams to get into that red zone, but not break. We'll see if the defense can come up with a good stand here right now. Pass protection for Robert Kent was pretty much unavailable. It wasn't even anywhere to be found in the building except on that one play where Kent was able to find his receiver in the end zone. It looked like catching that touchdown was Brett Reese Jr., number 88, after we went back and saw that a little bit closer. This time, Texas is going to go out of the I formation, hand it off to Dominic Carson, and Carson has his first touchdown of the season. Did not score last week in the opener for Texas. Now the Revolution regained the lead 12-7, to and Dominic Carson scores his first rushing touchdown of the year. Just a tough, a tough way to stop down there. With, you know, the return to kickoff, Jimmy Allen gets him at the one. It's tough there with the defense being on the field last, and then they come out and Salina returns the kickoff for a touchdown, and you go back out there. But you know, these special point or these extra points on special teams are going to come down huge. So, see if Travis Taylor or somebody around the edge can get around and get another block. Extra point pending from Brad Dunavant. Dunavant spent some time last year with the Texas Revolution. Bounced around the CIF a little bit. And he's going to yank this one to the left. He was not their kicker last week in their opener on the road against the Wichita Force. And now that 
turns away the Revolution after two touchdowns with two missed opportunities to score. Once a kick blocked by Travis Taylor. This one a kick missed to the left-hand side by Denevant and Brian Berner. The score remains a five-point lead for the Texas Revolution as we have had three touchdowns in the first three minutes. Yeah, we ought to have some fresh defenses. They shouldn't be too uh, too winded so far. They have not been uh, been out on that field much. Denevant was gone last week. Turns out he had a pre-existing engagement lined up that he knew, the team knew that he was going to be gone. Kind of doing a little bit of research. The guy's also a high school football coach down in the Dallas area. And one thing, it's so difficult to have the realistic practices of going in with special teams. You can kick outdoors, but outdoors you're going to have the wider uprights. To come in here, 10 foot wide uprights, always a little bit tricky. But the guys had some experience. That time, not sure where the breakdown actually occurred, but regardless, two, miss, two missed point after attempts and a 12-7 revolution lead. 12-17 still remaining here in this game. And now back deep for the revolution as the ball falls off the tee. I know it's a windy day in Kansas, but that's a little <laughs> ridiculous when you're talking about indoor football as Denavon will have to come up and re-tee it up. Back deep for the Liberty will be Anthony Jones standing about the 10 and then back deeper. It looks like Rashad Pargo in the goal line. Actually, that's Ed Smith. Smith has it goes off his fingertips. Now he's going to return it and he'll get to about the eight yard line. We saw Ed Smith struggle with that football last week. Had a bunch, bunch of kickoff returns go off his fingertips and then send him into chase mode. But it seemed like that was plaguing both teams last week as Sioux City came in here and also struggled with muffing a bunch of returns for the kick return team against the Liberty. These new LED lights, they're going on about three years old here, Russ. When you are on the field and you look up at these lights, sometimes they are a bit overbearing. Yeah, it, you know, the new lighting system they put in here a few years ago is excellent, except for when you're looking up at a kickoff with it coming down. And not too many times do we see the kickoffs go up in the air. Usually they're squib kicks or onside kick style. So you see how, how that progresses during the during the game. That'll bring the player of the week on offense in the league onto the field now with Andrew Jackson. Jackson's going to hand it off. It'll be Tracy Brooks off the right-hand side. Brooks will gain about three yards on the play, and that'll bring up second down and seven. Tracy Brooks leading this team so far on the year with touchdowns. He has seven touchdowns on the year, five touchdowns on the ground, two touchdowns receiving. He also averages 81 and a half yards per game. As I said, Andrew Jackson, coming off of his best performance so far this young season, earned him Player of the Week honors on offense in the CIF. So far this year, he averages 266 yards per game in the air, 11 touchdowns against just two interceptions, and he is 42 of 68 passing the football. That pass on second down goes incomplete. It will bring up a third down and seven. Liberty have to get out to the 18-yard line and a chance to move the sticks for a new set of downs. Early on here, 11 minutes left to play in the first quarter. It's 12 to 7. Revolution leading over the Liberty. Salina with a big third down here. Empty backfield, four wide receivers. The slot receivers are in motion. Jackson looking deep, goes down the left hand wall, has a receiver, and it's caught. Caught inside the five yard line. The big target on the play is Matthew Craig, six foot five, 240. And Russ, this is a play you've been wanting to see the Liberty run through the first two games. Hey, I, I want to see them get the ball to Matthew Craig. He is a big body, long legs, can stride out. You know, being guarded by Anthony Webb out there, defensive back at six foot 190, and you got Matthew Craig at six five, 240. It, it's just a mismatch that has to be seen early and often. Now down in the red zone, pitch out to Brooks, started out right, cuts it back left, has two guys to beat, and he does. Tracy Brooks, his second touchdown of the game, this time on the ground, has just given Salina a one-point lead with 10-12 left to play in the opening quarter, 13-12, Salina up by one. That time it was a great cutback by Tracy Brooks to be able to free himself up left himself basically one-on-one -on -one against Webb. And so two plays in a row, the outcome for Anthony Webb was not what he would have hoped for for the former Kansas Jayhawk and now member of the Texas Revolution. 
13 to 12 our score. Jimmy Allen's extra point coming up as the Solana Liberty have just regained the lead. The snap from Kelvin McCoy, a little bit high. Brooks is going to stab it with the left hand now, roll out, looking to pass. Brooks backpedaling, two revolution, chasing. Tracy's going to let it go to the back of the end zone, looking for one of his linemen. It looked like maybe Kamali Matthews was the intended receiver, and that goes incomplete, and the revolution come away with a stop on the point after. Liberty lead it 13-12. to That brings us to our first media timeout. With 10-12 left to go in the first quarter, Salina 13, Texas 12. You're listening to it right here on KINA. Salina, get ready for WWE Live. Monday night, May 27th at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Randy Orton battles AJ Styles. Plus, Oscar defends the SmackDown Women's Championship against Mandy Rose with Sonya Deville. Then you see the Usos, The New Day, Ricochet and Aleister Black, Rusev with Lana and Shinsuke Nakamura in a battle for the Tag Team Championship and more. Don't wait. Great seats are available now at the box office and Tony's Pizza Event Center.com. Have you thought about upgrading your vehicle but hate spending all day at a dealership that does not value your time? Hi, Chris Sherbring with Bennett Buick GMC, personally inviting you in to see how car buying should be. With our no-pressure, non-commissioned sales staff, our upfront pricing, and an award-winning service department, I am confident you will choose us for your next vehicle. Our best price guarantee and high trading values, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. Stop in and see us at 651 South Ohio or visit us on the web 24 hours a day at BennettViewOfTMC.com. A1 Plumbing Services, a proud supporter of the Salina Liberty football team. A1 Plumbing makes your life easy. Competitive rates and quick response times, plus all work, including labor and parts, are guaranteed. A1 Plumbing is open to service 24 hours a day. New construction and remodeling are just the beginning of the many services master plumber Chris Bogan and his team perform. Save time and money with sewer camera service. Don't wait. Call A1 Plumbing, 827-4888. That's 827-4888. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Devin Haney along with Russ Kossel, Brian Berner on the field, Big Sam Pretty producing and engineering tonight's contest. Salina hosting the Revolution from Texas, 13-12 to 12 our score. Early on first quarter, we've already seen four touchdowns here in this game. Jimmy Allen ready to kick it away as the Revolution get ready to go they stab it again in very good field position and they will return this football back across the midfield stripe jimmy allen in on the tackle once again along with jake latimer travis taylor isaiah barfield and to the 21 yard line short field coming up for the revolution and another great play there offensively or excuse me on special teams for frankie solomon jr giving his team good field position for offense yeah, he picked it right out of the air about the 20-yard line. You know, Jimmy's a little frustrated because he wants to get that extra bounce before it, or if it can get by that second up man to get one more bounce to see if he can get it up and over. But Jimmy got a little taste on that saving touchdown tackle, and he's putting his nose right, right in there at midfield. From the 21-yard line, Robert Kent, one of the best quarterbacks in indoor football out there with his team, takes a snap from under center. Here comes some heat from the outside. Kent lets it fly to the end zone, and that ball is going to be broken up incomplete. That time putting pressure on Robert Kent from the backside was Javier Dyer coming in from that left end spot right now, spelling Jake Latimer, who's taking a rest. It's Dyer on the left tackle, Travis Taylor on the right tackle. Dana Harris Jr. now in there at defensive tackle right over the top of the center. Brock Long is your middle linebacker. Isaiah Barfield at left corner. At right corner, it is Tony Rudolph and also Tyler Stewart. Dontre Matthews patrolling the middle of the field. Here's the little screen slipped out to Dominic Carson. Carson got out of the grasp of Travis Taylor after about an eight-yard gain, then got a few more yards, was able to move the chains for a first down down to the seven-yard line where he was finally taken down by the Liberty secondary. Now we saw that all year long last year, Russ, with Dominic Carson. He is a slippery, slippery guy, Five foot five. He has a tendency to hide behind his offensive lineman and then by the time he's out in the open full speed sometimes it's too late yeah when he gets up to full speed like you talked about his first two or three steps are so quick he was much more fun to watch last year when he was playing for Salina than this year here's Kent looking to the end zone big pan click cake block over here on the near side as Jake Latimer gets rolled up on by one of the offensive linemen Brandon Bishop he did 
about the only thing you can do there, Brian, to keep Jake Latimer off your quarterback. Just pancake him down to the, and lay on him. Yeah, that, that's really about it. And you mentioned that Jake was out. It kind of glanced over him. He, he referenced to us last week. He does not like to come out of ball games. And over on the bench when he was uh, out that first play, you could tell, very upset. Latimer back in there now, a right tackle. Opposite Javier Dyer. Here comes Dyer with some pressure. They slip it again to Dominic Carson. And Carson there to meet up with Jake Latimer and Dyer, who came back through on the backside in pursuit. And now the ball will be spotted just inside. Now they're going to say outside of the five-yard line. So they must have spotted Dominic Carson's knee down early on in that carry. They're going to say the line of scrimmage now, the six-yard line. That will bring up third down and goal from the six for Texas. Yeah, Jake had him wrapped up there, and he, he almost shimmied out, and he had one leg to go, and Javier Dyer just come bearing down on top of him. So a, a good way to hold on and wait for the Calvary to get there. One-point lead right now being protected by the Liberty. Texas with a third down and goal to six. Here's Kent, back to pass, snaps out from under center, throws it in the back of the end zone, looking for his number one target, Clinton Solomon. And that thing almost went through the wall it was thrown so hard, but incomplete over the head of Clinton Solomon and a flag on the play standing down at the seven-yard line. And it looks like it will be against the Texas Revolution. So an interesting call here, Brian, for Theo Johnson, the defensive coordinator, if he declines, it's fourth down. If he accepts it, it remains third down, depending on penalty. We'll get the call here. It is holding against Texas. Well, they went ahead and accepted the penalty, pushing back a little bit. You know, it's one of those things. You, you have a feeling when you've got a quarterback like Ken, regardless of where you're at, third down, fourth down, you're going to continue to go for the uh, go for the touchdown. So probably a good opportunity to push him back. Hope you can get that pressure on the outside and uh, hopefully – Knocked the quarterback down. Gamble here by the Liberty, accepting the penalty. Now back to 16. This is going to be an offsides call on the Liberty. Revolution to the end zone. Trying to go to Clinton Solomon again. And that one's going to be broke up by Isaiah Barfield. But a flag on the play. And I believe this will be offsides. Looked like Javier Dyer, 55, jumped early there on that left end. And now they will give five yards back to the Revolution. Still remains third down. This might be... One of the world's longest third downs. Yeah, and Javier Dyer did jump off sides, but you also saw Ken at quarterback. He kind of double clutched and pulled his hands back and then shoved him back in there. So, I mean, I understand you got to watch the ball and you ride over the nose of the football, but you see the quarterback take a step back and then lean back in to get it. But nonetheless, a big third down here. Third down. This time it's third and goal from the 11 as we go back and forth. All three receivers for the Revolution on the right-hand side. One of them was offsides, as we don't see this called very often, but Brett Reese Jr. almost did not give the official any any opportunity there to make a judgment call. So it's what we call it. He had to throw the flag because Reese was already about three yards into the secondary by the time that ball snapped. So now we go back the other <laughs> way, still playing third down. Yeah, why not? Let's try it again, you know, back it up and replay it. Well, you go back to the offside penalty, and we've talked to a couple officials and got a couple different explanations. we got one more guy out of your peripheral vision, you know, from the side, then, then they throw the flag because it's hard for them to turn their head, you know, and watch the snap of the ball. From 16, it's 30 and goal. Receivers on the right-hand side again. Kent's back to pass. Let's it rip to the right-hand side. There's a flag down and a hard tackle. Inside of the five yard line against Brett Reese Jr., but a flag lies down inside the 10. They're going to say illegal contact, I believe, against the Liberty secondary, and that will give Texas a first down, I believe. Let's get the call here. And it is a first down, and that's Brian's favorite bad fourth call so far this year is what's the difference between holding contact and interference? Yeah, that time it uh, it clearly looked like there was a push before the ball was let go, but it will be a penalty against Salina. And so now first and goal, so I guess it was always within uh, two goal, or however you want to say that. Yeah. But uh, now they just get it a little darn closer. Well, now it's the 11, and instead of third down, well, it's first down. So I guess now first, yeah. and, first and 10. There so a go. new set of downs via penalty for the Texas Revolution. All this time, the clock continues to roll down. Now inside of six minutes left to go first quarter. Robert Kent under center, and they're going to blow this one dead before it even starts. 
Apparently. Yeah, Co Coach Johnson ran in, didn't like what he was seeing, so he called a quick timeout. So a quick timeout here by the Salina Liberty. Other games going on tonight. We mentioned the expansion team in Enid back in action again. They are going to have a game tonight. I believe it's their home opener against the Wichita Force. That game is scoreless so far. Also, along I-29, a game that is just getting ready to get fired up here in the next four minutes. The Omaha Beef in Sioux City tonight at Tyson Event Center to take on the Bandits. So far, Wichita Force winless on the season. Oklahoma 0-1, Omaha 1-0, Sioux City 0-1. Salina comes in in this game 1-1, Texas Revolution at 1-0. I think Brian said it best early on when we were doing pregame that this league, if anything else, has proved to be very unpredictable. You don't know from one night to another. You look at a matchup and say, oh, yeah, well, this team here, Team A, should definitely win this game. Then they end up losing by 25 points or so. You just don't know. But that's what makes this sport so fun. They talk about March Madness in the tournament, Russ. I think we see it every week here in indoor football. We got madness every Saturday night <laughs> inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center. Three receivers on the right-hand side again. Kent's going to slip it off to Dominic Carson. That is incomplete. And Carson, I'm not sure, would have made it very far anyway. And what I really, really have liked watching here, <laughs> and every time the Revolution go with three wide receivers on the right-hand side, Brian, those Salina Liberty corners are coming up, and they are jamming them with a purpose. Yeah, Dietre Matthews is, is really coming up and laying a licking on whoever he gets in his area. And it, it's fun to watch, like you said, what that's doing. It's taking Kent's options really out of the play. We say they don't run the ball a whole lot, but they do in a way with those little dump passes they make to Carson out of the backfield. Second down and goal this time. Kent under pressure, but he skips away. Latimer trying to recover and get back in there, and it's going to be broken up in the end zone. Broken up by the Jayhawk. Isaiah Barfield, welcome back. He is back for game number one of his season after sitting out the first two games. And by the way, Isaiah, you're coming back. Welcome back, but you get to cover one of the league's best receivers in Clinton Solomon. So far, Barfield pitching a shutout. Yeah, Barfield had a great read on that. He come from the far side of the field over to make the play, and it all started by the, the defensive line and Latimer and Taylor just, just crashing down and you know, with the corners, you know, jamming the wide receivers, it, it's allowing them to cover a little better, it seems, than it was last week. You talk about a guy that you would worry about coming in out of shape. Isaiah's not that guy. He stays in shape, and he is ready to play here tonight against the Revolution. Here's early movement again up front. I believe this is going to go against Salina once again. And you wonder now, Brian, if there's something going on pre-snap with that offensive line for the Revolution that's drawing Salina off sides. Yeah, and it's both times that they've been off sides, it's been on the right side of that offensive line. That's where Aeneas Ruiz is stationed, and I don't know whether maybe he's making some sort of head bob or slight movement with the hands, but that's where it seems to be coming from. You have to think that Theo Johnson, the coaching staff, is going to be in the ear of the official if they actually do see something. And another footnote on that, different guys jumping off sides for the Liberty. It hasn't been the same guy every time. Third down and goal from the six. Robert Kent to the end zone. Overthrows his receiver and two defensive backs for the Liberty. Clinton Solomon coming up. He is unhappy right in the face of one of the officials. Barfield on the coverage down low. And also newcomer Tyler Stewart went sailing over the wall trying to bring that football in. Tyler Stewart's been on this roster since day one. He was on short-term IR, injured in camp for the Liberty. But, Russ, we know this is a guy that Heron O'Neill really, really likes, and early on we are seeing why. Yeah, our coach is a, a huge, a huge supporter and fan of, of Tyler Stewart. And, you know, watching him in pregame, he's so quick, and he sold out over the wall there. In fact, the ball was overthrown, so I'm not sure what the receiver wanted. Fourth down and goal. Here's Kent. Looking to pass again. Now under pressure. Throws it to the end zone. It's incomplete and a flag down at the goal line. Holy penalty flags, Moses. We are having a lot of them here on this drive. We've had third down, it seems like, 80 times in a row. And it looks like we may have another reset here as there's a flag laying right at the goal line in the center of the field, Brian. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go with another kind of illegal use of the hands. 
So that's going to be another automatic first down. And that's one of the things when your quarterback has as much time and kind of moving in that pocket as Kent did, you set yourselves up for some of that uh, unnecessary contact that could get flagged. Big Chris Mays back in there on the defensive line, six foot four, 370 pounds from the University of Georgia. He will clog up that middle and let Taylor and Latimer do their things off the edge. Also backed up by Brock Long. I formation here for the Revolution. They're going to turn. Now pass it to the end zone. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Revolution. A ball up high to LaDon Hudson. The six foot three wide receiver went up, snatched it out of the air. And that long drive, enabled by penalties for the Revolution, puts Texas back out in front, 18 to 13. Yeah, tough, tough penalties there. I don't, you, you know, with the the illegal contact or the pass interference, and we've talked about it the last two weeks on the road and here. You know, you wonder what the difference is, but nonetheless. Uh, you know, get a touchdown, give it up, and see if you can get a stop here. And apparently, the Revolution are not thrilled with their kicking game as their offense is still out on the field. Looks like Texas here is going to go for two after their first two point after kicks were denied. Jet sweep coming around, Dominic Carson, and he's going to squeeze it into the end zone before the collision. Two blockers for the Revolution got annihilated over there by the Liberty defense on the far side, and the two-point conversion will be good, and that will put Texas up by a full touchdown here as we take a media timeout. It is 20-13, to 13, our score, 233 left to go in the first quarter. You're listening to Liberty Football here on KINA. Spring fever. We all have it because camping season is just around the corner, and you deserve to enjoy the outdoors in a brand new camper from Four Seasons RV Acres. Soar into savings with new 2018 and 19 Keystone Cougar travel trailers and fifth wheels at their lowest prices ever. All new and used units are priced to move. The Soar into Savings Sale is now through April 13th at Four Seasons RV Acres, just five miles east of Abilene on I-70, where the fun begins. Exciting memories of a lifetime, ultimate entertainment for children of all ages. It's the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Three Ring Circus. Wild animals, acrobatics, tightrope walkers, clowns, all included in six jaw-dropping performances. Shows April 12th at 2 and 7, Saturday, April 13th at 10, 2 and 7, and the 14th at 2. Fans tickets on sale now at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Come one, come all to the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Circus, the biggest and best circus in town. Salina Power Sports is Salina's fun authority. Serving Central Kansas since 1988, Salina Power Sports features a full line of Mahindra Rocks or Utility Vehicles, Arctic Cat and CF Moto off-road ATVs and side-by-sides, and Hustler, Big Dog, Spartan, and Honda Moors. Need service? The pros at Salina Power Sports work on all major brands of ATVs, side-by-sides, motorcycles, and even sea new watercraft. Need parts? From batteries, tires, and engine parts to belts and hoses, if you need it, these guys can get it. That's Salina Power Sports, 632 South Broadway. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Let's go. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 233 left to go here, opening quarter. 20 to 13, our score. Regardless of what the scoreboard says, Brian Burner, if I'm wrong, you can correct me. But three touchdowns and a two point conversion for the Texas Revolution equals 20. And as soon as you say that, they get it fixed. I have to do everything around here, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, of course. Maybe I should. Uh, I'm the one with the magic thumb. That just said, hey, we're true. back and we're ready to go. Be careful who you tell that to. Touchdown lead right now for the Revolution. 20-13, to 13, our score, 233. Left to go here in the opening quarter. Yes, we're still in the first quarter. Some of the games that start at 7 o'clock, they might be as done tonight if we keep this up. Here's Denevant with the kick, barely scraping by the Raptors here at the arena. And it's going to be taken by Ed Smith Jr. Angling to the right-hand side, he will make it past the 15, barely. And that will bring the Salina Liberty out for what it looks to be their second drive of the game. So far, this has been a really strange game. Texas and Salina traded touchdowns. We had three touchdowns in the first three minutes of this game. Then Salina put together a sustained drive, took a 13-12 to 12 lead, and then Texas put together a penalty-littered drive, 
that most of the penalties went to their favor, and they ended up scoring. Dominic Carson, the former Liberty running back, got a two-point conversion, and right now that's our difference with the Revolution having a seven-point lead. Andrew Jackson sends two receivers in motion, left-hand side. He'll gun it out to that side. Rashad Pargo dodges two defenders, and he's going to have a five-yard game on the quick pitch to the left and bring the football out to the 20, where it'll be second down and five. Talk about a quick pitch to the outside to Pargo. You know, maybe get Andrew Jackson in some get some momentum going here and just get in the flow of things because you haven't really had much flow and you know not nothing exciting but five, been on the field much. Five, five yards every play Pargo leads the team in receiving 83 yards per game here's the pass over the middle Pargo trying to haul this one in and had a defensive back Anthony Webb draped all over him no flag on the play and now a third down and five coming up here for the Liberty. We talked about Pargo leading the team in receiving yards, 83 yards per game. He also has three touchdowns on the season. It's Anthony Jones, though, however, that leads the team in receiving touchdowns with four. The first first two games of the year, the Liberty 47% on third down. A very easily manageable third and five here. Let's see, see, what, see what coach can draw up. Ron O'Neill yelling at one of his receivers. Now he's going to switch Pargo and Matthew Craig left and right. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Two slot receivers leave the backfield. They're in motion. Jackson looking for everything. Down the field, tries Tracy Brooks, and it bounces off the 99KG logo in the back of the end zone. Incomplete, and that may be our last play of the first quarter. It's the clock running down. There's about a one-second difference, if that, between play clock and game clock, and now the officials stop the clock. Didn't see no complications on that play. I'm not quite sure. Now they're going to restart the clock. Okay. Why not? It's been an interesting first quarter, to say the least. And they start. They stopped the game clock, but they didn't stop the play clock, and now they're offset, and Liberty will have to run this fourth down play before the end of the quarter. Hmm. From the 20, fourth down and five. They need to get across the midfield, strive for a new set of downs. Head and shoulder pump fake by Jackson. Now looking across the middle, he's going to have – up against the wall, actually leading from the middle, looking for Anthony Jones, and that is incomplete. And a turnover on downs now for the Salina Liberty as they will give it back to the Revolution, trailing by seven, 5.6 seconds left to play here in the opening quarter. There was 14 seconds on the clock when that ball hit the wall. So I'm not sure what's going on with the clock, but... Nonetheless, just a lot of confusion it looked like on that fourth down play as there was really three receivers in the area and all three of them were covered. You know, it kind of, he kind of threw a dart. You know, Andrew threw a dart and it, it really any three of them could have reached out and caught it and nobody was real sure who was it was intended for. Now there's 1.9 seconds on the clock and now the officials are saying, let's run it out and take the end of the first quarter. Boy, this is... <laughs> Not impressive at all by the officials and the scoreboard <laughs> operation, probably a combo of both. Let's see if we can recover here and get everybody back online into the first quarter. 20-13 to 13 is our score. Second quarter action coming up with the Revolution leading by a touchdown here on KINA. Ava, why are you sitting in Mom's car? Because, Noah, I'm hungry. And every Monday we go to Rib Crib, where kids 12 and under eat free all day. Ava, Mom and Dad love their menu, and I like the ribs. Ava, they get my fingers gooey. <laughs> Ava, what, Noah? I like Mondays at Rib Crib, too, but today's Saturday. You're just a couple of days away. Two free kids' entrees with each adult entree purchase all day Mondays at Rib Crib in Salina on South 9th in front of Lowe's. Why wait to get rid of that old car? Once you file your taxes, bring in proof of the return and drive away happy. We'll make it happen now. We're your place. Every vehicle we sell gets a complete inspection. We provide car history and you get a free auto check. No tax check yet? No problem. Come to Salina Used Cars with proof of your income tax return. It's as good as cash to us. Get a better car, truck, or SUV now with approved credit. See dealer for details. Stop by our two lots in Salina, just off the corner of Crawford and Ohio, or visit us now at SalinaUsedCars.com. The Liberty plays here, here. Salina's sports station is KINA. Next game will be a home game for the Salina Liberty, but it won't be next Saturday night. They will have their first bye of the season next Saturday night on April 13th. But then the following Saturday will be April 20th, and they will welcome in the force from Wichita. 
to renew the I-135 rivalry between Salina and Wichita. Get your tickets now at Tony's Pizza Event Center or walk up to the box office anytime. Tony's Pizza Event Center.com. All kids' tickets for every single home game here in Salina are just $5. Adult tickets start at just $9. First down and good field position for the Revolution after a turnover on downs for Salina. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Here's a flag on the play. They throw a little bubble screen out to the left-hand side to Clinton Solomon, and he is arrested immediately out there by the Salina Liberty defense led by Travis Taylor, but we'll have to check the flag. Yeah, I'm not sure what the flag's on, but Travis Taylor comes out and makes a great play, and Tony Rudolph also come up and shed the block. I didn't catch the flag. Well, trying it. They're calling hands to the face on number 50 on the offensive line for Texas. So Warren Dent, former Tar Heel, 6'6", 350, tagged with that penalty. That'll back Texas up to the 15-yard line. It's a big, big 15-yard penalty. Boy, those really hurt on this small field. Yeah, because you, you go from first and 10 to first and you know, three quarters of the length of the field on, on one play. Robert Kent now, first down and 25. Drops back to pass, has some heat. Now he steps up in the pocket, lets it go down the middle, left hand side of the field. Clinton Solomon is there to answer the bell. He springs ahead inside the 10 yard line, gets to the eight, and the first catch of the game officially for Clinton Solomon and Solo down to the eight yard line. And it will be first down and goal for the Revolution. Boy, he is so dangerous. When you have a quarterback wide receiver combination like that, you are never out of down and distance, that is for sure. Those two are dangerous when, when they're covered. Solomon wide open on the sideline. Tony Rudolph kind of got caught out in no man's land out there. Solomon just snuck behind him, and that's just not one you're going to see him drop hardly ever. First down and goal for the Revs from the eight-yard line. Dominic Carson, the lone setback. He's directly behind Robert Kent. Now he leaves. Three receivers on the right-hand side. Screen to Carson on that side. And he gets caught in a train wreck over by the wall right in front of Brian Berner. And this defense has been pretty good against those slip screens and especially against the running game so far through the first two and a half games. Yeah, they're doing a good job. And, and that time they're able to just kind of slide over. If you give Kent too much time, really one of his first options is he's really looks for is where's Carson at because he's so small he kind of hides himself in behind that offensive line could even hide himself behind Robert Kent he's 246 foot four Kent back to pass looking towards the end zone slips it to Carson and he is annihilated holy smoke somebody call some help for Dominic Carson he was just taken down by Winston Green Car Carson was waiting on that ball rest <laughs> to land in his hands and in the meantime paid for it Winston's a good seven or eight yards from the ball back there, you know, in Brian's area, and he just come full board. And, you know, Kent just kind of lofted the ball to him and just gave Winston enough time to come up and take him out. Winston might still be a little bit angry about his number being taken away. <laughs> it's very possible. Of course, Winston was at 19. We joke about that. Isaiah Barfield, when he came back, took 19 back. Here's a loft now to the end zone. Solomon, the intended receiver, and it's picked off. A deflection, and now the Liberty have it. They're going to return it back to the 10-yard line. The deflection that time for the Liberty came from Tony Rudolph, and then taking the interception off of the deflection was Tyler Stewart, his first game as a Liberty defensive back, and he combines back there with Tony Rudolph for the takeaway. The Liberty stand tall back in the red zone. Welcome to your first game in Salina. Tyler Stewart back back to the original start of the play. Tony Rudolph, just a great beat on the ball. The receiver turned on him and got him, and he just got his hand up in there and pushed the ball just high enough up in the air for Tyler Stewart to come get it. And you assume he was going to get tackled to the end zone, but gets it out to the 11-yard line nonetheless. Great, great defensive play by Salina. Liberty stand tall there. They get a takeaway. There's that turnover battle that we've talked about with Coach O'Neill. Here's Jackson now. He'll slip it into the belly of Tracy Brooks. Tracy's off and running. Got ended up right short of the first down sticks, or else right now he'd be dancing in the end zone. He did roll ahead to the 24. That is a gain of 13 yards on first down, and it'll bring up a new set of downs at the midfield stripe. Tracy Brooks just a hair away from a touchdown. Yeah, he rolled out of the rolled out of the tackle and got going and tried to tried to catch his feet and just couldn't get it. Now we're going hurry up, Salina. 
Hurrying up here, no huddle. Pitch out, Brooks, left-hand side. He's across the midfield stripe, two flags fly as Brooks is brought down at the 22-yard line. And Brian Tempo, we hear Coach O'Neill say quite often, sometimes that can really set the pace of the game, and right now he wants to go no huddle with his guys, but we have to check this flag. Yeah, we had two flags come in, one from each direction. And it's going to be hands to the face against Texas. So that'll add 15 yards on the personal foul. Back to that hurry up tempo offense. I think one of the things when you're going to go with Tracy Brooks running the ball, it makes it that much easier. Line up, let him find those gaps, get back in, do the same thing. This time they went right, then they came back left. So that penalty will give Salina. Another good chunk of yardage here. It'll be all the way down to the 11-yard line. Three receivers, right-hand side. Back into the belly of Brooks. Tracy skates it off to the right-hand side, gets around one tackle, dives one at the goal line, and into the end zone, Tracy Brooks. Already his third touchdown of the night. Still 11.27 left to go in the second quarter, and the Liberty back within one. You talk about Don Dominic Carson being, being elusive and Tracy says, okay, Dominic, I'll see your elusiveness, and we'll just go. And so far, Tracy Brooks is just having continuing to go where he left off last week, coming off that big second half last week. You don't think there's a little chip on his shoulder, do you, Brian? He sat behind Tracy Brooks, or excuse me, Dominic Carson pretty much all year last year. Now he gets to see the guy that he sat behind across the line of scrimmage from him. And it's probably a little bit more effort and a little bit more tenaciousness tonight in Tracy Brooks. Yeah, I was just going to say that same thing as Jimmy Allen's point after is up and good that, that Tracy did. He was overshadowed so much last last year by Dominic Carson. And, and Coach said it, a lot of people said it. You know what? We've got something special here in Tracy Brooks. It's just we've got to find a way to use it. And I think that year of development has really shown off. And tonight I think Tracy wants to showcase what he's able to do. And he's coming out of the backfield very strong. So the Liberty start the second quarter here on an interception taken away by Tyler Stewart. Tyler brought it out to the 11-yard line, and then three Tracy Brooks runs and a penalty later. Salina ties this up at 20 points apiece. That's a big stand there, Russ. You talk about swings. That could be a 14-point swing for the Liberty. Yeah, you go back to the defensive play by the two defensive backs. It was an excellent, excellent read on the ball, and, you give the ball to Tracy Brooks once, and, you know, he almost breaks the first down play for a touchdown, and you give it to him again, and you get the illegal hands to the face, and, you know, you're, you're just marching down the field with Tracy Brooks. you got to keep giving him the ball the way he's been running. You know, last week in particular, he ran, you know, he ran great last week in the first half, and they kind of went away from him and came back to him in the second half, and he's just continuing right where he, right where he left off from last week. Jimmy Allen's kick now off the shins this time of the Texas mid, I'll say mid receiver because he's standing about the 15, 20 yard lines. That's Frankie Solomon. It goes off his legs and then bounces up against the wall and becomes a dead ball. 11.20 left to go here. You want to keep it tuned at halftime because you will see or hear Dontre Matthews. Brian had a chance to set Detroit down and have him be a part of our Precision Electric player profile. It's a different side of Dontre, I think, than what you see on the field. I think that's safe to say. You will want to definitely keep attuned. Some of the trials and tribulations of Dietre's life, and we talk about him being here two years ago, the difference between him being released from Salina two years ago and now the guy that we have back here this year is night and day, and you get to have a little peek into as of why and probably a little bit of self-reflection for Dietre during that interview. Wouldn't you say, Brian, it was a good one? Yeah, it was good. It was fun to sit down with him, and, and I think he touched it. He, he has changed so much from when he was here the first time. And, uh, you know, then he went to Wichita to Bismarck. And he, he's kind of gone north to south here in the league. But great guy and uh, really should become a fan favorite. You put anybody in Bismarck, that can change a man. I don't care. Who you <laughs> here is Robert Kinn. Now he has a sidearm this one out of the pocket. He's, he has Liberty defensive linemen all around him. What a beautiful throw by Robert Kinn. And he finds his number one over here on the right-hand side next to the wall. It's Clinton Solomon. Move the chains for the Revolution. They have another first down. And they are inside of the Liberty 20-yard line at the 19. 
left to go here. Clock running as we approach halftime. 20 to 20, our score. This has been a good one so far. Yeah, it's been a back and forth battle. And like you said, Ken, he, he's got a cannon on him and he, he knows. Precision represents quality and the foul back down exact. towards the five yard line. There's going to be a quarterback sack for Travis Taylor. Taylor came in and he took Robert Kent down back at the 10 yard line. These Texas receivers have done a good job of finding that open space to allow Kent to get some of those receptions. But as we get closer to this end zone and that real estate tightens up a little bit, he's having to be more selective in that time. Great job by the secondary to take away any of his options. Kent now looking at a second down and goal from back at the 10 yard line after the sack. Here comes Travis again. It's a shovel pass though right by him. Carson's going to take it inside the five, inside the two, inside the goal line. Touchdown, Dominic Carson. His second touchdown of the night. And this one comes with 7.58 left to go in the second quarter. And it's 26 to 20. And right now it looked like, Russ, that time the revolution play calling against the aggressiveness of those ends for the Salina Liberty. Yeah, I mean, you're just gonna say that. They, they get, they've get they been getting a speed rush on the outside and they basically just chipped them and let them go and just a little flip pass to Dominic with two guys out in front as only one receiver, you know, two in motion, only one ran a route to run his guy off and the rest of them just blocked it. And, you know, all important extra point as Texas comes out to see if they can finally hit one. Just under eight minutes left to go before half. Point after, Dunavant. Extra point is up, and he jerks it left. He missed another one. 0 for 3 now on extra points by the Texas Revolution. 7.58 left to go in the second quarter, and immediate timeout. 26 to 20 is our score. Texas leads it by 6 here on KINA. In Electric and Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. And here we go, Steve C's car. Steve C's car's on the west side of Abilene. Yeah, Abilene Car Sales is the place that will save you lots of money. Tax time is car time. Whether you've got your return or just filed your return, good credit, bad credit, no credit, no, no worries. worries. At Abilene Car Sales, use your return and pay nothing else out of pocket. Tax time is car time at Abilene Car Sales on Northwest 3rd in Abilene or online at abilenecarsales.com. The name is JJ Lawn Care, but don't let the name fool you. It's not just lawns they care about, it's their customers. JJ Lawn Care is a locally owned business that works with people in and around Salina on more than just lawns. The spring season is here, and now's the time to act for a healthy, lush lawn. Call now for a free estimate on a four or six step program. Let JJ Lawn Care come to the rescue for your fescue. Mm -hmm. Give them a call today, 820 7728. JJ Lawn Care, caring for more than just your lawn. Listening to Liberty Football on KINA. 
Just inside eight minutes left to go here, second quarter, 26 to 20 is our scores. The Texas Revolution have just taken a six point lead courtesy of Dominic Carson's second touchdown of the night. Right now it's a running back battle shaping up between Carson and Tracy Brooks. Both of them have two rushing touchdowns. Tracy Brooks, however, has a third touchdown on a return on the first kickoff that the Liberty were able to return here in this game. It was Brooks that housed it for the first score of the game for Salina. They'll have a chance to do that once again as Brad Dunavon is ready to kick it away here. Back deep will be Tracy Brooks. Also in front of him will be Anthony Jones standing at the 10. It will be Ed Smith Jr. standing in the red and white stripes of the end zone right in front of Brian Burner. And we've got a little bit of break in action potentially. Now they're going to go ahead and go during that uh, last event. They broke the upright. Oh, no. Down in the uh, lower corner. That's a problem. It still broke. Here's a kick now by Devonaut. Ed Smith will take it at the goal line out of the 5 to the 10. Leaps Frogs a would-be tackler at the 15 and ends up near the 20-yard line. Beautiful, beautiful block that time by Dontre Matthews. He came in and blindsided Scooter Rogers. That allowed Ed Smith to get out to near the 20 yard line. And that's where the Salina Liberty will take over there. They will have a new drive starting at the 19. I want to go back to that during that last time out, that event that the team put on, they were had contestants kick a mannequin in for a field goal. One of the people made it, and there's a rumor that they're talking to the Revolution about kicking PATs. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> First down is hit for the Liberty from the 19. Here's Tracy Brooks, little scat. He paused a couple of times. He went through that hole rust, tapping his brakes, and then back on the gas, and then back on the brake, and he was able to angle his way out to the right-hand sideline for a gain of six. Yeah, his stop and go is so, so quick. He, you know, his first two steps are, are almost untouchable, and when he gets brakes free at that, he was just one plan away from, from breaking that one. Clock continues to roll as we approach the seven-minute mark. Second down and three coming up for the Liberty just inside of the Revolution territory. Jackson back to pass, unleashes it down the middle of the field, and it's dropped. Touchdown dropped by Anthony Jones in the end zone. That ball was not the prettiest ball that came off the right hand of Andrew Jackson, but still should have been caught, and Jones back to the huddle to talk to his quarterback after that one. He's not going to do much talking. He's just going to be doing some apologizing because, yeah, that ball didn't come out of Andrew Jackson's arm well, but it still hit him right in the number nine, right in the center of his chest with no revolution within five yards of him. Tracy Brooks, Matthew Craig both come over. They pat him on the back and say, hey, keep going here, bud. You lead the team in touchdowns for a reason. There's a pitch out now to Brooks on third down and three. Tracy cuts it back, has a first down. Now he makes another cut. He's into the open in the second level, and he will reach inside of the 15-yard line. It's a first down for the Liberty as Tracy Brooks just went from one sideline to the other, picked up a first down, and now the new set of downs will put the Liberty inside of the 15-yard line, first and 10 at the 14. Excellent stop and go once again. He sees a hole and then it closes up, stop, plant, jump, jump cut to the next one. He did that three or four times. It got clear across the field for a big game. Tracy Brooks putting on a show, looking for his fourth touchdown of the night. We're still in the first half. Here's a pump fake out left hand side. Jackson to the end zone, looking for Jones. He nearly made a one handed catch. Boy, that more than enough would have made up for the drop in the end zone, but it comes away incomplete. On coverage that time was Trey Colbert for the Texas Revolution. Colbert with tight coverage on that route. And it's one of those things you hear a lot of people from the crowd. I was one. Looked like there might have been some contact. But uh, for the most part, on those routes, the officials seem to be letting him play. 26-20, Revolution leading by six. Here's a delay to Brooks. He's in the second level again. Spins off a tackler, still on his feet. He's going to get to the five, maybe inside the five at the four. And a first down for Salina. It's first and goal. I would just go Tracy Brooks left, Tracy Brooks right, Tracy Brooks up the middle right now. That's my three plays. <laughs> there doesn't need to be much of anything else. You know, we've said it over and over about the big second half he's had he had last week, and this week is is no different. First time this year we've seen this set subbing out a wide receiver, subbing in Travis Taylor. 
to lead block for a running back. We saw this quite a bit last year with Dominic Carson at running back. Taylor lining up as a fullback in the I formation in front of Tracy Brooks. Sweep out right-hand side. Brooks gets it to the five and then gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well defended that time by the Texas Revolution. And you almost wonder, Brian, with Salinas scoring on the end to where the Revolution bench is located, if Dominic Carson wasn't barking out that play for the Revolution defense. Yeah, I, I definitely would agree with that. And kind of surprised if they go with that set. Let uh, let Taylor go to the right, and maybe Tracy Brookson could come back left because where Tracy uh, or where Travis Taylor goes that direction, the defense is going to follow. Same formation. Taylor leading up through the hole. Brooks gets hit right at the point of attack. No gain on the play. Now that'll bring up third down. So Tracy Brooks never brought down, but his forward progress was stopped. He ran into a wall at the four, was able to get it probably about six more inches, but lost a half a foot on the play. And more paint off the helmet of Tracy Brooks. Now Taylor will go out, and back into the game will be Anthony Jones at wide receiver. Talk about getting the ball in the red zone, which in the red zone is inside the five in the indoor game. The Liberty are 9 for 24 for 38%, and one more, they're 8 for 24 with touchdowns. So not very good in the red zone this year so far. All three receivers on the left-hand side. Fake pitch out to Brooks. Now Jackson under pressure, has to let it go. Goes all the way back across the field, and nearly the highlight catch of the year. Brought in by the big wide receiver, Matthew Craig, but he was unable to bring it down with him. As the ball comes free as he was going to the ground, that will bring up fourth down, and it looks like Jimmy Allen coming on for the Salina Liberty to cut this six-point revolution lead in half. And Craig still down. And the way he landed, Russ, boy, he really got up the ladder on that one. He might have just knocked the wind out of himself. Yeah, that's what you hope for. But he did, like you said, it would have been a highlight catch of the year because, you know, at his big frame, you know, we talk about at 6'5", 240, when you get up that high and you, you basically let control of your body go to just reach up and get the ball and you come down, you have a tendency to land awkward. So, you know, it, it, we'll just hope he's all right and it was just the wind. But, you know, interesting play call there where you where you bring in Travis Taylor at fullback. Brian, our first look at the Salina Regional Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Clinic injury report. It looks like the goalpost is repaired. The goalpost is repaired. Brian is offline. There we go. We're back. <laughs> yeah, and I, this injury timeout did one thing. It gave Andrew Jackson, I think, enough time to give, to convince Coach Ron O'Neill, let's go for it. Liberty with one turnover on downs tonight so far. This is a fourth down conversion. They need four and a half yards. Jackson, three receivers on the right-hand side. Back to pass. Goes to the end zone, and it's dropped again. Oh, boy. Two passes in the end zone on this drive, dropped by Anthony Jones. Jackson did everything he needed to do, even took a hit at the end of it as he stayed in the pocket till the very last minute. But his receiver unable to come up and make a play that time. Three dropped balls, and I will give Matthew Craig all the credit in the world. That would have been a highlight catch if he would have came down with that. But the other two by Anthony Jones dropped, and the Revolution defense turned the Liberty offense away for the second time tonight. It remains Texas 26, Salina 20, with 2.37 left to go here before halftime. Yeah, tough, tough for him there to drop another one, but it looked like he was open, called for it, and as soon as he took his eyes off of it, he saw another defender coming right at him and maybe – got sorry you know took his eyes off the football just long enough Robert Kent now has his offense out on the field he's gonna float a screen out in the flat to the right hand side it's Clifton Rhodes with his first touch of the night he will gain four yards on that play bring it out to the nine and it will be second down and six clock continuing to run 221 left to go here as we work our way towards the 60 second warning revolution with a six-point lead neither one of these teams here through the first half has had a two possession lead. They've been back and forth trading leads and ties. There's a snap now, boy, everything looked really funny up front. And they're gonna air this one out down the left-hand sideline. And I'm not sure who these flags are gonna be on, Russ. The center snapped the ball, but it appeared that the center was the only one that moved on that play. Of course, he controls everything, but neither one of his offensive linemen moved that time. Yeah, we've seen that a couple times where, you know, the it, it just looks weird from up here where you're at, or where we're at. 
They're going to call illegal defense, of course, on the Salina Liberty, which Why not? Brian seems to be the default call when you don't know what to call to say illegal defense. Right, and outside it's going to be holding inside illegal defense. It looked to me almost, I thought I was going to see a head bob on the one of the offensive linemen that would have resulted in some movement. So that penalty will make it second down and one. Now for the Revolution. Clock still rolling. 1.43 left to go here second quarter. Two receivers in motion, one on each side. Robert Kidd has the ball stripped by Latimer. Now he lost his helmet. This play's dead. Latimer was coming back to get him some more at Robert Kidd, but he wasn't wearing his hat. And that time, Latimer engaged in a block, reaches out with his right hand, and slaps the football out of the grasp of Robert Kidd. For all intents and purposes, Brian, that's a quarterback sack for Jake Latimer as the play goes dead. Right, and, and the problem we're going to have is down here on the 15-yard line closest to me, we had a battle between Detroit Matthews and Brett Reese. Not sure what went on, but a flag was thrown. It is a personal foul on the Liberty defense. So that great play by Jake Latimer just goes for null as they're going to push this ball 15 yards on a personal foul issued against our halftime guest, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that, that's a play on. You know, you you were I I didn't see the fumble until you screamed it because I'm down here watching Detroit, and it was a hand battle the whole way down the field. Yeah. So I don't know how you call it one way or the other. This will take us to the 60 second warning. Robert Kent wants to talk about his strategy now. For the last minute, he has a six point lead and all three timeouts in his pocket. Texas leads it 26 to 20 as we go to the 60 second warning here on KINA area athletes and even weekend warriors the big home field advantage salina regionals or the peak and sports medicine clinic working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries or to heal through surgery and rehabilitation you can count on salina regional orthopedic and sports medicine clinic to get you back in the game led by orthopedic surgeon dr timothy hawks and sports medicine physician dr matthew file along with an a-team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at SalinaRegionalSportsMedicine.com. The spring season is here, and paintball fun is waiting for you at Elite Sports. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, five miles south of Salina, is open for the season. Get the group together and visit Elite Sports on Saturdays and Sundays during the spring and check out their new online booking system. Elite Sports features new low-impact paintballs for beginners or little ones, so everyone can have more fun. Visit them online at salinapaintballcomplex.com. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, open and waiting for you this weekend. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Out of the timeout, a first down and 10 play. Robert King goes scrambling away from the Liberty pressure and then runs into Brock Long after he gets about seven yards. And I'm not sure if I would just rather lay down and take the sack than get seven yards and meet Brock Long down the field up against that wall. A big hit for the former Forhey State Tiger and southeast of Saline Trojan. Seven yards by Kentho will put the nose of the football at the 20-yard line in Liberty Territory. Clock, I think, down to 5.1. You're telling me that play took a whole minute? Now they're going to say it only took nine seconds and put 51 seconds on the clock. And Texas will call a timeout. First of their three timeouts, they have two remaining. Well, maybe that was a courtesy timeout for the clock operator because I'm not sure because uh, the clock should stop when it is technically out of bounds when you get forced into the wall and reach it over. Uh, just, uh, getting great pressure up the middle with Latimer and, and Mays and Taylor on the outsides, but it, they get in there and it, it almost looked like from up here when, when they flush them out and they try to spin move, they're getting held, but nonetheless, you've got to keep the pressure on the quarterback you're going to have to rely on the secondary to make a play. They've been, you know, hit and miss all year, but I think they've made one interception already tonight on an excellent play. So 
You know, it's tough to do, but they're going to have to rely on them defensive backs a little more to make a play. 26 to 20 is our score. 51 seconds left to play. Texas Revolution at the Salina 20. Kent back to pass. Pump fakes three times. Now he finds a receiver at the five and another big hit by Brock Long as he comes in and cleans up the receiver for Texas, Brett Reese Jr. And Reese gets up a little shaky after that one. He has a couple of co-players or teammates over there checking on him. That ball will be put down at the four-yard line. I didn't need to be checked on after that with Brock Long with a great hit. But once again, you know, the Revolution are finding just enough space to get behind the first line in the secondary. 38 seconds remaining. Now Salina will take a timeout. And this will be their second timeout of the half. That will leave them with one remaining. Again, our precision player profile of the halftime break. Brian Berner sits down with Dontre Matthews and talks to him during halftime. Brian? Yeah, one of the things I think part of this timeout by Coach Johnson, you look at uh, the lineup that Texas just kind of threw out there, and as they got down inside the five-yard line, Dominic Carson came back into the mix. So you've got to pay attention to that quick little shovel pass or that handoff where they kind of sweep him out towards the right. 38.9 seconds left to play here after a first quarter where the first five minutes took an eternity. <laughs> we had three touchdowns in the first three minutes for us. That's how we got this one started. Since then, things have calmed down a little bit. Yeah, I kind of pumped the brakes a little bit here in the second quarter, but the Liberty getting the ball to start the second half, a huge defensive stand would go a long ways here. Robert Kent will duck under center. He has an empty backfield. Dominic Carson by himself on the left-hand side. Three wide receivers to the right. Pump fake to the right. Here comes Chris Mays. He's chasing Robert Kent all the way back to the 20-yard line, and Kent makes a touchdown pass on the run to Dominic Carson in the end zone. So Dominic now with his third touchdown of the night. It's two rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown. And the Revolution take the first double-digit lead of the night. They're up 32-20 to 20 with 32 seconds on the clock. And Texas has not converted an extra point kick all night long. Let's see if they elect to go for two here. It's only one half so far. We've still got a lot of football to play. Close makes it close for you and They will go for two. Kent's gets under center. And again, Dominic Carson in the backfield. Three receivers, one of them in tight, almost as a tight end standing up on the left-hand side. They fake pitch that way to the left-hand side. Kent backpedaling all the way to the 14. He'll put it in the back of the end zone to Clinton Solomon and another two-point conversion put on the board by Texas. 32 seconds left to play and a full two-touchdown, 14-point lead taken by the Texas Revolution. Now you got to look back, Brian, to that last drive for the Liberty and those dropped touchdown passes or would-be touchdown passes, which came away on a turnover for downs four. Salina not keeping pace in this game. Now they find themselves down by 14. Yeah, it kind of throws your, your rotation back and forth off. Key here is going to be to get that ball clean off the kick, try to get some uh, good yards up to where you potentially, with one timeout, you're going to have two, you know, realistically, three shots at the end zone. 420 is our score. Texas ready to ramp it back up here on special teams once again with Brad Dunavant kicking it away. Back deep once again for the Liberty will be Jones, Brooks, and Smith. Check scores for you at halftime. We'll also have Ron O'Neill as he goes to the locker room right before half. And also, as I've talked about, an interview with Dontre Matthews coming up here at the break. Donovan has the football on the goal line. Shoved all the way over to the right-hand side, even with the numerals on the turf here at Tony's Pizza Event Center. His kick high, end over end. It's going to be taken by Smith at the 5. Ed angles off to the right hand side now comes back left to the 10 now to the 15 stiff arm gets his way to the 20 now to the 24 25 and a flag comes in late a couple of good blocks there by the liberty but there might have been a bad one as we will check the clock with or excuse me the flag with 24 seconds left from this angle it looked like there should be a face mask called against texas 
His head was coming around that left side. Clearly, he was pulled down by the face mask. We'll see if the officials were in the position, if that's one of the calls, and it is. Personal foul face mask on Texas. Tracy Brooks was eavesdropping on that official conversation. He was confident it was against the Revolution, and it is. So now in scoring position is Salina. And this is almost a must score here for the Liberty. But now they are gifted good field position with a return for Matt Smith and the tack on penalty on the face mask. Nose of the footballs at the 12-yard line. Liberty still have a timeout left, 24.8 seconds on the clock. And again, 60-second time rulings in effect. That means if you go over the wall, up against the wall, the clock will stop. Also, it'll stop on incomplete passes. Two receivers on the right-hand side in motion. Jackson back to pass. Looking to that side, it's a quick out, and it's caught. Touchdown, Liberty in the end zone making the catch. Rashad Pargo. The leading receiver yardage-wise for this team always comes up when you need a money play, and he has just caught his fourth touchdown of the season and brought this game back within eight. Here's a crazy thing to say, though. Did you give Texas too much time? Could have. Texas really hasn't been that quick strike offense. I know the way this game's tailored, though, you could have left too much time with 20.7 seconds on the clock. But one play after the penalty, Jackson to Pargo. Pargo might have gotten a little help over there out of what is referred to as the party pit. <laughs> it looked like he did a really good job hauling that in. Jimmy Allen now on the extra point. The snap is good by Kelvin McCoy. The placement is down by Tracy Brooks, and Jimmy Allen nails that extra point. Now a seven-point game, 34-27. Now Jimmy Allen will flip field here and kick it away for the Liberty. Boy, you can just never coast into halftime, can you, Russ? You always got to have two or three events happen in this last minute. Yeah, I think in the last minute of the first game in Amarillo, we had three touchdown scores. There's there's two, and there's still 20.7 left. And you go back to the Rashad Pargo touchdown catch in the corner, and nonetheless, a great catch surrounded by a defender, but Andrew Jackson threading the needle. I mean, he had one spot to get it, <laughs> and he got it there, a great throw and an even better catch by Rashad. Heck, in Amarillo, I don't think we had three scores. I think we had three one-play scoring drives in the last minute. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> it was high flying, that's for sure. Also have to check at halftime, Brian, it looks like Tyler Stewart, his first game as a defensive back for the Liberty, it looks like he has his pads off. Yep, they're off, done for the night. Oh, boy, so he was playing really well. And that rotation on the defensive backfield for the Liberty continues. Caleb Young released this week. Isaiah Barfield back into the mix and also Stewart active for the first time off the injured reserve. Here's Allen's kick. Dominic Carson's going to take it at the five, and he's up the seam. Look out. Here comes Carson, and Travis Taylor goes along for the ride, as does Anthony Jones. And Carson brings this one all the way back to the 20, where now the Revolution will have a short field. Looks like they're going to spot it at the 21 with 15 and a half seconds left. Two timeouts left for the Revolution. You talk about the almost. That, that ball was two inches away from hitting the turf again and would have sailed over Carson's head, but... You know, the veteran player that he is can, you know, be able to make those plays and was able to scoop it up basically at full speed and nobody there, you know, to, to bring him down. So a big stand here with 15 seconds left for the Liberty defense. Here's the Liberty, and you can ring that turnover bell. Now might be the time to do it. 34-27 is our score. Liberty trailing by seven, closing out the first half of action. 15 and a half seconds left. Clinton Solomon, you know he's going to get some consideration. He's in the slot to the right-hand side. No running back. And Solomon offsides. And Jake Latimer came in and collided with Robert Kent. And now the offensive lineman, of course, thinking they have to protect their quarterback. I don't think they want to do that, though, because now Chris Mays gets involved. You know, I don't know. They want to protect their quarterback, but they were the one that sent Latimer into their they, quarterback. They, they wanted to protect their quarterback until Chris Mays got involved. <laughs> yes. Then they looked at 6'4", 370, and they went, All right. guys, come on. <laughs> and we still haven't got a call yet. This is a false start against Clinton Solomon coming across again. 
two or three steps past the line of scrimmage by the time that snap came through. So now that'll push the football back five yards, back on the other side of the midfield stripe, and make this now a 26-yard field in front of the Revolution. That play never happened, so now you got to reset the clock back to 15 seconds. Robert Kent this time will take it out of the shotgun. Two receivers on each side. Looked like they were offsides again. It wasn't Solomon this time. Solomon may have been a step off, but even further than that was Clifton Rhodes. And now an offensive lineman going after Latimer again. Jake just walks away. The Whitehead appears to be telling num number 71. Ru Aeneas Ruiz. I mean, he's pointing him to the bench, so I never saw no flag throw, but he... He had a hold of Jake Latimer well after the play was over and no flags were thrown. Jake is one of those classic stories of when he is off the field. He is the nicest, most polite guy you will ever meet. But when he puts the helmet on, he's a different story. And he's very, very intense. But I saw that polite, nice guy just kind of turn and walk off that time and leave it to be hashed out between the officials. <laughs> We talk to him before every game. And he's just a super down-to-earth guy to talk to. But like you said, when as soon as that helmet gets strapped on, it's all business. But right there, he's trying to walk away. It keeps getting shoved from behind. So now they are going to take Ruiz out of the game as he is replaced. Latimer on Robert Kent, throws Kent down to the ground, and the shovel pass to Dominic Carson goes for no gain as Travis Taylor is there with the tackle. So Taylor and Latimer getting it done again, and Latimer came in and again hit Robert Kent as he just got rid of that football and a timeout taken here by the Texas Revolution. So you have Latimer going after the quarterback, Taylor going after the running back, and they combine for no yards gained. They take Ruiz out and bring in number 76, Brandon Bishops at 6'4", 294, and maybe he doesn't have as quick a feet as Latimer because Jake just put his foot in the ground and just, you know, had a beat on, on the quarterback. You know, if they don't, if they don't have a flip play drawn up to, to DC right there, it would have been bad news. Bad news for Kent. Brian, one might ask why Latimer is such a good edge rusher. Well, he was a linebacker at Iowa State. He never played with his hand in the ground very much until he came to the indoor game. Well, and I think one of the things he'll tell you is he's got the age. He's got the experience, you know, at 30 years old. He's been around. He knows kind of how to outthink some of these guys. He's the one that said it, though, uh, to us a couple weeks ago. He goes, guys, indoor football, it's not rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times it looks like kill quarterback. 10.7 seconds left. Here's Latimer with a spin move. Kent gets rid of the football, and it's grossly incomplete. Landing between two receivers that were 10 yards apart from each other. And the clock, for some reason, continues to run. And the incomplete pass should have stopped the clock. 7.5 is what I heard the White Hat say they're going to set the clock back to. A lot of problems tonight with the clock. You know, and you, you get third down here and you wonder if it's a quick play and you get a stop, do you call a timeout if you're Salina with that one left to see if you can make a play happen and see what comes of it? You, you, you're almost certain that Texas won't kick it because they don't kick extra points anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just done kickoffs. 34-27, Texas trying to add on to that seven-point lead. Seven and a half seconds left. Each team with a timeout. Now they're going to change formation a little bit. They're going to give Solomon on the left-hand side, a running start. Kent, clean pocket this time, finds a receiver back to the original line of scrimmage where this drive started, and Clifton Rhodes will make the catch. He was taken up against that wall by Brock Long, and Texas will burn their last time out. And guys, look who's coming out on the field. Brad Dunavant. So it looks like Texas will go ahead and try it. And it's almost to the point here, I mean, why not? If you miss it, you're not really losing anything. You don't want to give it back to Salina. Well, I think the only thing that uh, you might be fearful of or that you hope Salina can do is come in, get the penetration, and block the kick. If they can turn this into points, knowing that they're going to get the ball back, this could be a big, uh, 
Brian, Good turnaround. Yeah, Brian, that may be what's on the mind here of Theo Johnson, the defensive coordinator and special teams coach for the Liberty, because on the heels of that Texas timeout, he called a timeout of his own, and he may, just given what the Liberty have been able to do against this kicking unit for the Revolution, he may go full on block here and see if they can't get a turnover for a score here in the last two seconds of this half. I know they will also probably have somebody back standing underneath the goal, goal post as well. And it looks like right now that's going to be Ed Smith Jr. Again, no fakes. Once you designate, you are going to kick at indoor football. You cannot fake your way out of it. So the placement will come from Wesley Harris. Dunavant will kick it away from the 26-yard line. The ball is up. It's end over end. And it goes to the right-hand side, incomplete of the upright. Dunavant got knocked down on the play. They're pleading to the officials, and no flag as we are going to come to the end of the first half. We'll await the arrival of Haran O'Neill, who is coming out to talk to his defensive coordinator and special teams coach, Theo Johnson. They give each other a little knuckle play there. As we have 15 minutes on the clock for halftime, trying to get to... Coach O'Neill before he goes to the locker room. Talk about Dunavant getting knocked down there. He he sold that pretty well getting knocked down. Let's just, just say that. Coach, things first half started out, a lot of points going back and forth. You got a turnover, kind of held some points back, but really the key that we've seen is the emergence of Tracy Brooks tonight. Tracy Brooks is doing really well for us, catching and um, running the football. The thing we got to do is catch the football. That's we're dropped already three touchdown passes already that would make it a difference in this ball game. Had uh, one series where there was like six penalties between the two teams. Is penalties uh, a factor that you see right now? Yes, it's a factor, but right now we can only control what we do. We can't control what officials call or not call. We got to play better than what we're playing, especially offensively. Any quick adjustments for the second half? No, just catch the ball. <laughs> Devin, back up to you. I love it. Ron O'Neill, the head coach uh, of the Salina Liberty, always just so real with us, and he doesn't pull any punches back right there. 34-27. We're at halftime. When we come back after this break, it is our player profile featuring Dontre Matthews, brought to you by Precision Electric at halftime. The Texas Revolution lead the Salina Liberty 34-27 right here on KINA. spring cleaning time and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list call comfort heating and air for an hvac clean and check our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape so when warm weather arrives your ac will be ready that means cleaning your coils checking freon levels double checking all electrical connections for safety even changing your filters for you follow us on social media for your chance to win a free clean and check appointment today salina get ready for wwe live monday night may 27th at tony's pizza event center randy orton battles aj styles plus oscar defends the smackdown women's championship against mandy rose with sonia deville and you see the usos the new day ricochet and alistair black rusev with lana and shinsuke nakamura in a a battle for the tag team championship and more don't wait great seats are available now at the box office and tony's pizza event center.com think about the word precision precision represents quality and the fact of being exact and accurate isn't that what you want when it comes to electrical precision electrical contractors in salina brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in central kansas since 2003 precision electrics focus on quality and performance combined with their experience and dedication creates a winning set of finished products which saves their customers money don't rely on so so electrical visit the team at precision electrical contractors online at pec salina.com <laughs> This is the Liberty Halftime Report. Coming up, a first half recap, stats, interviews, and a look at other CIF games. Now let's head back to the arena for Liberty Halftime on KINA. KINA. And welcome back to the Tony's Pizza Events Center. It is halftime at the Salina Liberty. And with us now is our get to know you section. Number four, Dontra Matthews. Dietre. Yes, sir. We go by, we don't know what the heck to call you at times, but as long as we're calling your name, that's all that matters. That's all that matters, you hit uh, Matthews. That's right. So, Dietre, it, it is our pleasure to have you 
back in Salina. It is. I'm glad to have. I'm glad to be back. We, I'm very glad to be yeah, back. Yeah, you, you, you've taken a uh, you, a lot we don't know. Right. From the standpoint of when we look on the you know you look on the program here, you see Victor Valley College. Okay, that's out in California. So I'm going. Okay, we got a Cali guy here, <laughs> but turns out I'm from you're Florida. from the opposite side. <laughs> yeah. You're a Florida guy. Yes, sir. I'm from a small town, kind of like Salina, kind of big. It's got like big cities surrounded by it, but more so just a little small country town that just raised me and kind of I grew from it and expanded and went to a town, town called Leesburg. And from there, I graduated high school, went to Victor Valley College, went to Victor Valley College. I accomplished a lot of self-accomplished goals there, but my big goal was I wanted to always win a ring. Mm -hmm. I didn't accomplish that in, in college. Took a year off from college when I left uh, Virginia University of Lynchburg. I went to try and get in the draft. Did okay. I ran a four-five-seven at when I was six-three-two fifteen. They was looking for me to be six-three-one eighty-five running the four-four. So I mean, you got you got to take your chances when you can. <laughs> so you, you you come then to the the CIF yes, and uh, end up starting. Uh, you know, Salina is your first professional yes, uh, opportunity. We have you here, but then you head south. You go down to Wichita. Yes. Then up, you go north. You go to Bismarck. You go to Bismarck. <laughs> then you're back to Wichita. Yes, sir. And now back in Salina. So you, you got this north-south thing <laughs> down, down pretty good. But uh, how is how has this league been? You, you've seen three different franchises. I don't necessarily want you to compare franchises. Mm -hmm. That's that's not the point. But uh, the point is, how are things going now with Salina? We're excited. We think this new ownership group has things going the right way. Great. How do you see it from a player's perspective? Honestly, I mean, when I saw you guys last year coming, like, looking outside in, like, I mean, I always, like everybody would always ask me before, like, once I left Salina, like, would you come back? It was a joke. I'm like, nah, maybe not, maybe not, because I really love Wichita. When I first got to Wichita, it showed me, like, Wichita fans showed me the embracing love that I was looking for. And then the ownership kind of did the same thing. Like, not saying that this ownership didn't. It was just my fit and my personality to a first and upcoming organization wasn't where where it was. But coming back to looking at it now with the great coaching staff that they have with Coach O, Coach Theo, and Coach Martinez, and their, and their ownership's always been great from when I first was here. I was like, man, looking like last year, missing the playoff from in Wichita, I was like, I think I want to go go back. I call, reached out to Coach, Coach O'Neill in free agency day. He was like, hey, I was looking looking to call you. I'm like, let's do it. Let's make it happen, Coach. I'm, this, this is where I want to be at. I, mean, I, I live in Wichita, so it was like, I mean, yeah, the drive, is it, it gets rough some days, but hey, it's low, it, I love to play football, so I can make that drive for two, three, three days out of the week and keep my nine to five. I'm good. It's uh – you know, it's been one of those things when this team – it's one of those things I think people really don't understand. When the team first started here, practices were in the evenings. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. with the addition of, of being able to have the partnership down to Salina Fieldhouse, they've gone to a morning practice, and really it kind of puts in more of a true you're here for football, football. Mm -hmm. type attitude. And so, you know, coming back and forth, do you, do you see that that's – it's – probably maybe helps keep your body a little bit fresher yes it does. some of those uh, practices <laughs> yeah i mean i like some practices i mean i miss i miss probably throughout camp and through since the season i miss probably like one practice and that was because i mean right now i'm expecting a kid my third child so like i'll be back and forth from like one day is that we have to go to the doctor we don't know if we're going to be induced or not so it's like i can't miss those visits so that, like last week was my vacation. Coach called it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to touch on it. We'll we'll come back. Yeah, no. Nah, it was. No, everybody thinks that it was because an injury. Like, no, nah, it wasn't really the injury. Uh, injury that kept me from playing last week. It was more so just I was on call. So like, any given time that she was at the doctor's office that Saturday, it was like, hey, we could be going to. We could be going into labor. I got to get on the road. So I had my little brother and my and my older brother here with me in the game, and I'm looking up at them at the game. Like, is it, are we good? We clear, like <laughs> <laughs> just in case. So, what's the status? Where are we at? We're we're actually a week off right now. So okay. next week is perfect with the forest. The bye week coming up, and we're expecting to be due next week. So 
It's, it, it works. It plays out perfectly. Do we know? Boy. 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 Yes, Your sir. Name's picked out? Kier. All right. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, one thing that, that we looked at at the Amarillo game, you know, I, I've got the luxury. I, I consider it, I always joke, I've got the best seat in the house. Yeah, yeah you do. I'm right down <laughs> there on the boards, right by the bench. And Amarillo is interesting because they have such a rabid fan base. Yes. And they had behind the end zone a group of, of guys. Two of them were decked out in, in their in jerseys. jerseys. So yes. you, you knew they meant business. <laughs> but they were on you from the start of that game. Yes. And it, it was interesting because you were just – you, you were talking back, yeah. but you were smiling the whole time. <laughs> what does that do to your mindset during the game? Do you feed off that? It kind of it, – it, I wouldn't say feed off it, but it strikes a, it strikes another fire because I'm already playing a team that I have a, a lot of, like, rival history with. And then, like, the fans, I love the fans because of, because of that nature of what they bring. Like, they're going to come at you. They're going to give you the trash talk. They're going to – but at the end of the day, they know, like – if we don't trash talk him and try to try try to get him out of his game, which a lot of t people don't know that they thinking that trash talking to me is going to get me out of my game because they see I say something back and I'm smiling. Like, nah, trash talking to me is just like, hey, you you don't want to start that fire because that's something that you don't want your team to go through. <laughs> and, and one of the guys in particular mentioned we he and I had a conversation at halftime, and then even after the game, he he, you know, pulled me aside to make sure he goes, hey. Let number four know <laughs> everything we did was because we respect his game so much. So that made me feel good. You and I actually talked, and you may not remember this, but uh, you know, during the course of the game, I think it was late third, third quarter, quarter, early mm -hmm. fourth quarter, you had had earlier, you had kind of had a skirmish with, with, with one of the receivers. One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, number one uh, for Amarillo, and his name escapes him. But, but he, you know, he was their go-to guy coming in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of asked – what's going on what's being said and basically you were taking him out of his game yep that's my that's my mo i mean like everybody thinks that i'm a hothead kind of guy like I, I'm, I'm a firecracker which i kind of am but it's like the firecracker in me is to get you get the other person out of that game your best person i can get in his head and if i can get in your best person's head it's gonna be a long night which it was i mean it just our immaturity show we were, we're a young team and that and that's that comes with it i mean but Last week we showed like our maturity is 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 we're making up for our mistakes with our with our with our youth. And, and I'm going to be the first to admit when when you I, I see two sides of you, mm -hmm. and, and I'm I'm starting to really you know now that we we've had the ability to talk a few weeks here, and and things you know I get it mm -hmm. I see it because you are such a such a likable guy, but it seems like you you're one of those that's wired you've got the ability to turn that switch on and on, on and when off. you need to yes sir i definitely and, it, and it's a it's a curse as well because throughout my whole life i was never able to just turn it off like and it showed my first year here like i was never able to turn it off as a quickness it was just i had to the, the three years of me being in this league it helped me grow and learn how to be able to harness my anger in and as well as smile and and, and do my job because at the end of the day they're doing whatever it is that I'm trying to do to their player. Right. And I can't take that to heart because they, they're, they're doing it to, to just as what I'm doing. Like, so I, for first, like, my first got in is like, yeah, like, nah, I'm I'm, hard, I'm hothead. I, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. But as I got here and I got older, and I mean, like I say, like, being through the ropes, like, being in Wichita with a, bu a bunch of veterans, being in Bismarck with an up-and-coming team that had, a, like, good veteran staff on it, and then coming back to Wichita, it, it, it definitely helped me control myself to where I was able to, like, understand how to on and off, on and off, on and off. It's a time and a place for everything. Have there been those one or two coaches or guys that you have played with that have had a big impact in helping your Most definitely. career go on? Most definitely. Coach Rod Miller, he's up in Bismarck right now. He was the, the, the one guy that I really could say that really helped change my game and my and helped me understand myself because I was a young kid coming in and everybody didn't understand like I was freshly like 23 24 years old when I first came into this line like my first actual pro professional game I thought my football career was over it so getting that chance to come back and then it was like I was playing with a vengeance and I was playing with a lot of anger coming back my first two years coach Miller helped me understand like to harness that anger and to just use it as a as a tool to thrive and to get in other people's head and 
one other person is my McKendrick Harper, like McKendrick Harper down in Wichita. He also helped me out with my game as well as like seeing and learning the field. Like it took me a minute to understand how to play the game. But I mean, I caught on, I caught on to a quick my first year here, but that was at corner being in the middle of the field. It's a lot more action than than on that, don't know, than just being on one side. So like it being with, with uh, McKendrick Harper, he had in, um, uh, Elbert Mack, he also they also played a big role in my development as being who I am today. Well, that's good. I, t- I tell you what, it, it's fun getting to know you, and it's it's even more fun to get to watch you in action, uh, you know, out on the field. We're going to end up the, these last few questions um, really put you on the spot here. Let's go. Ahead. When you're warming up, uh, are you a music guy? Yes, sir, yeah, definitely. The, Gotta have my what, music. Uh, what, what's the go-to uh, go-to track or two that uh, really gets you motivated? My go-to, I have two songs. Uh, one is one of the artists is called Derez Deshaun, and it's called uh, Hardaway, and also it's called Pain. Because I mean, like my struggle has been a blessing, and I wouldn't have it no other way. And the the artists that I listen to, uh, Derez Deshaun and a guy named Rod Wave, they put their pain in their in their in their in their songs. And when I'm warming up, that pain revolves into like I can feel myself what I went through in the song. So it definitely gives me a motivation and it like tunes me in. Okay, last question for you. And I, I'm I'm going to spin this one around a little bit since you you do live down in Wichita. Mm-hmm. We're getting ready. If we go down to Wichita for an evening, where is our must go to place for dinner? Dinner. Where are you going to recommend we go? Dinner, dinner. Mm. I told you I was going to put you on the spot. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, My favorite place in Wichita is Broadway Burger. I'm a big, big barbecue guy. So, like, I love Broadway Burger. They got different styles of burgers. And the specific burger I get is the burger with pulled pork. And it's two. It's a half a pound of burger with pulled pork on it with the sauce. Oh my God! All right, that's uh, <laughs> we play at Wichita this year, so I, I that's we we're, we're go gonna to, we're gonna we hit that one up. We're gonna hit that one up. <laughs> Dietre Matthews, you'll know him as number four yes, out on the field, and uh, tell you what. We need to get some fans out here, don't we? Yes, we do. They were they was, they was showing up last week. We get a, we get keep, get a couple more in. I love it. We'll keep it going. It's nice to get to know you. Good luck uh, the rest of the way. We'll be back with more Salina Liberty football from the Tony's Pizza Event Center. You're listening to Liberty Football on 910 KINA. When you hire street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. Have you thought about upgrading your vehicle but hate spending all day at a dealership that does not value your time? Hi, Chris Sherbring with Bennett Buick GMC, personally inviting you in to see how car buying should be. With our no-pressure, non-commissioned sales staff, our upfront pricing, and an award-winning service department, I am confident you will choose us for your next vehicle. Our best price guarantee and high trading values, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. Stop in and see us at 651 South Ohio or visit us on the web 24 hours a day at BennettBuickGMC.com. Exciting memories of a lifetime, ultimate entertainment for children of all ages. It's the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Three Ring Circus. Wild animals, acrobatics, tightrope walkers, clowns, all included in six jaw-dropping performances. Shows April 12th at 2 and 7, Saturday, April 13th at 10, 2 and 7, and the 14th at 2. Advanced tickets on sale now at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Come one, come all to the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Circus, the biggest and best circus in town. The Liberty plays here, here. Salinas Sports Station is KINA. Back here at Tony's Pizza Events Center, about three minutes away from start of the third quarter. So far, a back-and-forth battle. That sees the Texas Revolution ahead here at the break, 34-27. to Right now, it's a running back battle, Russ, between Dominic Carson and Tracy Brooks. Both of those guys have three touchdowns in the first half. Dominic Carson with two rushing one receiving, Tracy Brooks with two rushing, one on special teams on a kick return, 
And right now, it seems to be the difference in this game is the Salina Liberty offense slash Texas Revolution defense. In that in little exchange, Salina has been unable to score on two different drives, and really in a game this tight that's going back and forth that's this high scoring, that's the difference that we see right now. But Salina, a chance to get back even with the Texas Revolution as they start out with possession here in the third quarter. Yeah, they got in a seesaw battle early. We saw a big explosive first quarter, and then, you know, things kind of slowed down a little bit in the second quarter with Texas putting a long drive together. And then Salina putting a long drive together that was negated by penalties that once again have come back to bite Salina. And you go back to your running back battle between D.C. and, and Tracy Brooks. And, you know, we, we thought that something like this was going to happen between these two guys were as high octane and as high energy as these two guys are. You know, and you look and throw my key to the second half in here is, is can the Liberty defense – get that one stop and get that one all-important turnover and Tracy Brooks keep the momentum going that he had in the first half he came out great after the first half last week against Sioux City can they come out again and Tracy Brooks take control of this game from the offensive side of the ball Brian Berner when you go down to you time to check our Salina Regional Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Clinic injury report and as you reported at the end of the first half Tyler Stewart will not return in this game. That will press Winston Green into some action here. And what we've seen from Winston so far at the end of that second half was playing in on corner with the release of Caleb Young and Sean Kelly. And now with Tyler Stewart going out of this game, that really leaves the Salina Liberty a defensive back short. But with the health of Dontre Matthews back into this contest and the addition of Isaiah Barfield, still enough bodies to go around in that secondary. We'll probably just see them in different spots. Yeah, I think you're you're spot on with that. Uh, you know, a little depleted. Tyler Stewart hamstring will keep him out the uh, remainder of this contest. We we're a little concerned with Matthew Craig when he went down in the corner, but uh, you know, a little bit of limited movement. But he still has the pads on, out warming up. So I expect to see him in the second half. Salina Liberty set to get the football here to start second half. Let's look at some other scores going on right now. The last score we saw reported from Enid, Oklahoma, was the Wichita Force leading the Oklahoma Flying Aces 10 to nothing. That was back at the end of the first quarter. Also a second quarter score from Sioux City, Iowa. The Sioux City Bandits leading the Omaha Beef 19 to 14. And right here, of course, the Texas Revolution leading the Salina Liberty. 34 to 27 as we are just about ready for third quarter action again the schedule for next week for the Salina Liberty they will have their first bye of the week and it also features a Sunday game which should be a really good one the two best teams last year and the last really two years in the south uh, outside of Duke City features Amarillo and the Texas Revolution. I think you can safely say the two best teams of Texas if you want to go that route. But Amarillo will be at the Texas Revolution at the Star in Frisco to play the Revolution. That will be on Sunday, April 14th. Then the two Saturday games next week, the Wichita Force will be in Omaha to play the Beef. And the Oklahoma Flying Aces will be in Albuquerque to play the Duke City Gladiators. Again, the Salina Liberty off next week. Their next game. I'll be right back here in Salina at Tony's Pizza Event Center against the Wichita Force coming up on Saturday, April 20th. Kids tickets always $5 here at home and adult tickets starting out at just $9 here at Tony's Pizza Event Center. And if you're in the area, Russ, a big circus coming to town next week. Huh? Yeah, three, what are we, three nights? Six shows. Six shows. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's two shows on Friday, one Friday afternoon, one Friday night. Three shows on Saturday. Got one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at seven. I believe they're 10, 2, and 7 on Saturday, and then one on Sunday to cap it all out at 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. So you're sure to find a time that will fit your schedule. Bring the kiddos on out. It's the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Circus, a three ring circus here in Tony's Pete's Event Center. Here's the high kick by Brad Dunnervant. He will start out this half, and it's Ed Smith. One cut. Here he goes. Ended the 20, 25, and then drug down from behind. What might have been a touchdown saving tackle by Frankie Solomon Jr. And Ed Smith brings it out across the midfield stripe. No flags on the play. I think it's important to re reiterate that. And Salina will start out at the Texas 
24-yard line. 34-27, Texas with a seven-point cushion to protect here as we go through the third and fourth quarters. Andrew Jackson will start out. Kevin McCoy is center, as always. Kamali Matthews on the right-hand side. Also Isaiah Trussell on the left-hand side. Three wide receivers. All on the left-hand side. Pitch out Tracy Brooks. Starts out left, now comes back right. Looking for a block. He gets one from his quarterback. Out on the edge. Tracy Brooks up against the wall hard after a nine-yard gain. They might spot him at eight at the 15-yard line. That'll bring up second down and two. And again, Brian, we see that vicious, vicious jump cut from Tracy Brooks. Yeah, Tracy does such a good job of getting that cut and, and changing the direction. Kind of funny, though. He ended up with the one blocker, and that was Andrew Jackson. And Andrew kind of, he goes, you know what, I'll help you out, but, oh, boy, just kind of threw a couple arms out there to try to push a guy away. Bring up second down and two, ball to 15-yard line. Pargo goes in motion again, the handoff to Brooks. Up the middle, jump cut out to the right-hand side, has first down and more. Down to the six-yard line, Tracy Brooks getting a heavy workload here to start the second quarter. And I think even though it was a 20-point lead last week, Russ, we came out of the arena Wondering why they went away from Tracy Brooks last week against Sioux City. Yeah, we, we saw it in the second quarter. They kind of went away from Tracy a little bit. And he come out, and I don't know if he took took offense to that. And when they gave him the ball back, he couldn't be stopped. And you see a big, heavy dose of Tracy Brooks on this opening drive to start the second half. First down and goal just outside of the five-yard line for the Liberty. Pitch out, Tracy Brooks, left-hand side, looking for space. Now he's running, has to get away from one tackler, and he's going to make a little bit of gravy here out of what should have been a two-yard loss. He's going to have a two-yard gain, take the football inside the five-yard line to the four. Should have been dead in the right to the Revolution defense that time, but got away and made it to the four-yard line. They're actually going to spot it down at the five, where it's second down and goal. Do a lot to get some momentum back on the side of the Liberty if they can punch it in here on the opening drive of the second half. Andrew Jackson, all receivers, three of them on the right-hand side. Brooks standing in to protect. Jackson to the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Liberty. He found his favorite target. His name is Rashad Pargo. And for Pargo, it's his second touchdown of the day. And he has one in the first half, one in the second half, and now five touchdowns on the season. And the Salina Liberty back to within one. That looked really, really easy. Yeah, what a beautiful route ran by Rashad. He kind of went to the corner of the end zone. He just kind of ran out and in and floated behind the coverage, you know, in the back of the end zone and came wide open. And give kudos to the offensive line. Andrew Jackson had all day to throw right there. Those guys up front didn't even give up a sack last week against Sioux City, which is a pretty good defense. And so far, Andrew Jackson has had it fairly easy tonight. This extra point pending from Jimmy Allen can tie things up. The kick is up, and it is high, and it is good. 34-34, the Liberty march down the field. We talk about momentum all the time as these games, a lot like basketball t games, Brian Burner, you see runs by one team. If the other team's unable to answer, that's where they get out of hand. Right there, the Liberty coming out of the locker room to start the second half, captured a little bit of the, that momentum back into their side. Now a tie ball game. Ryan's changing batteries. Your thoughts on that momentum? That's huge. I mean, you go back to the basketball reference, you, you go on a big run, you know, and it changes the whole momentum to come out of the second half. We'll throw it back. Can the defense step up and make a play to get maybe that turnover or, you know, not to go that far, but just get a defensive stop where you can get the ball back because – you get back and forth trading trading leads back and forth, you know, it's going to come down to who has the ball last at the end of the game. And I think, Brian, during that first half, I think the most disruptive defense was definitely the Salina Liberty's defense, but they just gave up some things on the back end there on the, on the secondary. Still not on. Secondary. We're going to see that, though. What, two releases, one addition. Isaiah Barfield is a second addition. There's four new, four different changes right now going on. Then you have Sean Kelly come out and start. He goes away because of injury. Communication has a lot to do with this game also, Russ. So we'll have to see that. Here's another great play on special teams by Frankie Solomon. And Solomon stabs that football, gets it to bounce off the turf at the 15-yard line, then returns it back for 13 yards. How big has he been tonight? Uh, you talk about how big it, That ball took a nasty hop, and he still picked it right out of the ground. Unbelievable concentration and, and soft hands by Frankie Solomon to get, you know, 10 yards out of nothing. It should have been nothing. 
and he has preserved field position all night long for this Texas Revolution offense. They haven't started out in bad field position all night. Here they are starting their first drive of the second half in Liberty Territory just outside of the 23-yard line. Tie football game, but they have great field position. Robert Kent Jr. with Dominic Carson in the offensive backfield directly behind him. Three wide receivers on the right-hand side. The pitch out comes to Carson, dancing in the hole. He tries to cut back, and now Jake Latimer is going to give him a hug from behind and take him down to the ground. Carson, I think he feels like pounding that football to the ground, Russ. If he would have stuck with that cut, he might have been able to run free on the left side. Yeah, if he sticks with the cut and goes far side away from us, there's nobody over there. The defense over-pursued, but he hesitated just enough where Latimer could get off his block and corral him from behind. I think Latimer and Taylor have done an excellent job pursuing the quarterback and then turning back downfield to get the runner as they run by. That's just a two-yard gain for Carson. Second down and eight. Kent back under center. Bubble screen out left-hand side and a big hit. Two big hits from the Salina Liberty secondary. Boy, those guys have been laying it on all night long. It was Travis Taylor who came in and made the hit, but the initial hit was put on there by Liberty defensive back Tony Rudolph. And that goes for just two yards. Third down and five now as the football sitting at the 18. Tony Rudolph made big plays in the first half coming up with that, you know, the tip pass to get the interception for Stewart. We're not going to see him like we talked about being out the second half. Who's going to step up in the secondary and make a play? Right now it's Barfield on the left corner. Detroit Matthews in there at safety. Here's the drop back by Kent. Latimer behind him. Overran the play. Now here comes Brock Long in chase. And it's going to be a low pass that is complete to Clinton Solomon at the 11-yard line. That's a new set of downs now for the Texas Revolution. Brian, we've seen it a couple of times tonight. This Revolution offense comes up with big plays whenever they need it. Yeah, they do. And that time the coverage was there by Salina back in the end zone. The problem was they left Solomon kind of over in that, uh, that left side. Coverage was soft. He was able to get the reception knocked in the boards for the first down. All three receivers on the left-hand side. Carson in the backfield. He will stay in and block, help out on Latimer, but Travis Taylor gets to Robert Kent, still standing up, and finally Robert Kent goes down. Travis Taylor was around the ankles of Robert Kent for a good three yards. Kent trying to look. He even turned in the grasp of Taylor, looking for a wide receiver, but then, uh-oh, Jake Latimer got free, and he had to lay down <laughs> before the night train came through. That was the smartest play Kent has made all night, to just stop trying to get out because Latimer was on a dead sprint, and it, it was going to end up bad for him. So it's probably a good thing that they blew the play dead here. But you, you go back, and now you're second and, and deep. So can the defense come up with a play? The league's humanitarian award for this year might have to go to the officials who blew that play dead <laughs> in fear of the diesel coming through to Robert Kent. Now early movement that goes uncalled. The right tackle for the Revolution moved early, and the pass incomplete back against the wall. Russ, we've seen this now three times, two of them that we know of in the first half. That right tackle keeps moving early for the Revolution. Not a flag yet on illegal procedure on that motion. You see the right tackle. It's It's been him, Ruiz, and Latimer. Latimer and Ruiz going back and forth, and Ruiz is trying to get the quick step. But I'm wondering if when the receiver's coming in motion on the near side towards us on his side is crossing his line of sight before the ball snap, and then he's jumping. Ruiz and Latimer once again matched up for this third down and long. It's third down and 20. Here's Kent, back to pass, lets it go down the middle of the field, and a big hit on the receiver, the ball incomplete, as Dontre Matthews came in, and you see the official point to his shoulder and say, yes, sir, that's an illegal or illegal hit that Dietre just laid off. Brian, that was right in front of you. Yeah, it was. You had Dietre along with Isaiah Barfield both kind of collapsing in, and there was really no opportunity. That ball just kind of shot through, and I will say this, having got my finger on it, Kent had a little bit on that ball. <laughs> Fourth down now coming up for the Revolution. And they are going to go for it from midfield. A big down here in this game. They have always answered the bell so far in this contest. And the receiver, seven yards off the line of scrimmage. Holy cow, that wasn't even close. At least when they're offsides, Russ, there's no doubt the officials have to call that. They have been way offsides tonight. We've seen more offsides calls in this game on receivers than we've seen in the last or all three weeks put together. And for the first time tonight, we're up here, you know, in the Raptors up here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. 
and you can feel the energy in this place with the crowd that's here. They're, that's the first time they've really gotten into the game and maybe caused some distraction for the Revolution offense. A lot of people dressed up as empty seats tonight, but this is one of those crowds we've seen it. They can be loud, the ones that are here. This arena, very, very noise-worthy, if you will. Fourth down and long. Here's the receivers offsides again. The flag this time doesn't go, and they're going to pass it down the field. Incomplete coverage that time provided by the Salina Liberty by Tony Rudolph, who has been playing very, very well the last two weeks, and that will bring us not only to a turnover on downs, Liberty will take over, but also to our first media timeout of the second half. Momentum. In the side of the Salina Liberty, but we still have a tie game, 34-34 with 7.49 left to go here in the third on KINA. A1 Plumbing Services, a proud supporter of the Salina Liberty football team. A1 Plumbing makes your life easy. Competitive rates and quick response times, plus all work, including labor and parts, are guaranteed. A1 Plumbing is open to service 24 hours a day. New construction and remodeling are just the beginning of the many services master plumber Chris Bogan and his team perform. Save time and money with sewer camera service. Don't wait. Call A1 Plumbing, 827-4888. That's 827-4888. Spring fever. We all have it because camping season is just around the corner, and you deserve to enjoy the outdoors in a brand new camper from Four Seasons RV Acres. Soar into savings with new 2018 and 19 Keystone Cougar travel trailers and fifth wheels at their lowest prices ever. All new and used units are priced to move. The Soar into Savings Sale is now through April 13th at Four Seasons RV Acres, just five miles east of Abilene on I-70, where the fun begins. Salina Power Sports is Salina's fun authority. Serving Central Kansas since 1988, Salina Power Sports features a full line of Mahindra Rocks or Utility Vehicles, Arctic Cat and CF Moto off-road ATVs and side-by-sides, and Hustler, Big Dog, Spartan, and Honda Mowers. Need service? The pros at Salina Power Sports work on all major brands of ATVs, side-by-sides, motorcycles, and even sea new watercraft. Need parts? From batteries, tires, and engine parts to belts and hoses, if you need it, these guys can get it. That's Salina Power Sports, 632 South Broadway. Ready. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. 34-34, our score. The Liberty right now winning the second half, seven to nothing. As they have came back, they've overcome a seven-point deficit at halftime. Now they've got to stop as the defense did their part to help out here and get the offense the ball back. And Russ, not only did they get the ball back, they have the ball in really good field position starting out at the Texas 21-yard line. Yeah, one of the best field positions, you know, the Liberty haven't really started a couple a couple drives back inside their 15-10. Their but we're, we're going to go into this now, and we're going to go – I'm going to go back to the first drive of the game. Tracy Brooks, run left, like you said <laughs> in the first half, run right, run middle. Expect to see Tracy Brooks. They haven't shown they can contain him a little bit, but he's still getting in the end zone. He's still averaging close to seven yards a carry for the game. So, and it, and another another thing I noticed out there on the offense is Matthew Craig has been on every snap, which yeah. is good after that tough hit in the corner he had in the first half. Kamali Matthews, Kelvin McCoy, Isaiah Trussell, they continue to do their job up front for Robert Kent. They also deserve a lot of credit on those running plays. We see there's times that Brooks will start out going one way and there's nothing there, but those guys are so good at just keeping their blocks and keeping that backside open to where Brooks is confident. He can cut back and there's going to be nothing but green in front of him and that's what they have done so far. A little delay here after the but he got really carried away with promotions. Must love promotions. Here's Andrew Jackson back to pass. It's a screen play out to Brooks. Brooks dancing around. This time he is not going to be able to get away, and he is thrown for a five-yard loss back to the 23-yard line on Salinas' side. And Brian, we knew it's going to happen sooner or later. That pursuit was going to happen for Texas, and that time they were able to defend the screen play very well. Right, that time, you know, it was a screen pass that kind of left Tracy where he, he didn't have all his momentum. He had to stop, get the ball, and then pick it back up. Where on these run plays, he's just getting in, and he's kind of top speed from the get-go. Second down now and 15 
Two receivers on the right-hand side make it three, two of them in motion. Jackson now back to pass, steps up in the pocket, lets one go. He has Matthew Craig, who bounces off a tackler at the 15-yard line. That's actually going to cost him about three yards as Craig caught the ball at the 15, bounced off a hit, and then went back to the 18 where he was tackled there. But it will get the Liberty back into position here, Russ, where they can pick up a first down. Now third down and eight after the five-yard loss on first down. A much more manageable third down here for the Liberty and you know you talk about Craig kind of hurt himself there by not going down but the defensive back well undersized we talked about Matthew Craig at 6'5 240 and I, I talked to him before the game and 6'5 might be he might they might be selling him short a little bit approaching the six minute mark of the third quarter two receivers now actually make it three on the left hand side it's an empty backfield for Andrew Jackson third down and eight Jackson Tried to go over the middle. It was a one-hand stab attempt by Tracy Brooks. The ball high and just a little behind him. Brooks nearly hauled that in. I don't think he would have had the first down, though, and it will be short. Another fourth down coming up for the Liberty. 0 for 1 tonight on fourth down. In, 0 for 1 in the first half, and you go back to the season before that, they were 5 for 6, so the odds are, are playing in to the Liberty favor. Two turnovers on downs tonight for the Liberty. And we talked about that at halftime. That might be the difference. And now Heron O'Neill frustrated as they're going to have to call a timeout with 5.30 left to play here in the first quarter. Brian, this, excuse me, I said first quarter. It's third quarter. This third quarter moving a lot different than what we had in the first half. This quarter zipping right along. And right now, the Liberty with a big fourth down in front of them. Yeah, big fourth play. Fourth down play that's up there. And Coach O'Neill was, was upset. The team kind of takes a little, took a little bit too much time trying to get the play organized once it left uh, from Coach O'Neill to, to Jackson. We've seen the play clock reset at some strange times. Unfortunately for Salina, this was not one of them as it got down to about six seconds when Jackson had to call the timeout. So that will cost the Liberty one of their timeouts here in the second half. Still have two remaining as each team gets three timeouts per half. 5.30 left to go third quarter. We are tied 34-34. Three receivers set. Tracy Brooks in the backfield. Left hip of Andrew Jackson. Jackson takes the snap. Now he'll let it go to the left-hand side of the field, and it is going to be a disputed catch. Texas saying incomplete. Salina saying complete. As coming across, getting that football was Ed Smith. Brian, you're looking right down that wall. You had the best look at that one probably in the building. Yeah, Smith came across and, and was able to get his hands underneath that ball, had it in clean possession the entire way. 5.04 left to play. A new set of downs for the Liberty. Smith hauled that ball in. It was tagged down at the four-yard line. First down and goal from the four. Here's an option play. We don't see it very often, but Andrew Jackson is running, and Andrew Jackson is scoring on the ground. The player of the week offensively in Champions Indoor Football has just put the Liberty ahead 40-34 on an option play. Russ, it looked like he never thought about giving that football up. Oh, the defensive end just said, I'm taking Tracy Brooks the whole way, and Andrew did a great job of reading it and cutting right, right up in there. And that's three for four tonight in the red zone for three touchdowns, and then one time they came away with nothing. And we go back to the on the year, they were 9 for 24 before this game. So a big improvement in the red zone for Salina. Chance now to take a seven-point lead on the right foot of Jimmy Allen. Snap by Kelvin McCoy. Perfect. Placement down by Tracy Brooks. And the kick goes horribly left for Jimmy Allen on that play. And it remains a six-point Salina Liberty lead. And we'll keep it right here with 4.53 left to go. So far, so good. It's a 13-0 run for the Liberty guys to start this third quarter. Yeah, Solani just needs to keep the momentum. And, you know, that time on that, that point after, it just looked like it was, it was trouble from the start. Snap was a little bit to the side, and then the placement went down, which threw the timing off for Jimmy Allen as he kind of approached the ball. And when your timing's off, that foot placement with that plant foot, if it gets too far out, you're just going to go ahead and pull that ball, which he did, to the left side. So six-point lead, 40 to 34 and now we'll see what is in store 
on the kickoff, the ever dangerous Dominic Carson will be back deep. So the Liberty defense setting the tone there, Russ, after flexing their muscle and forcing the Revolution off the field. That's really the first time in this game I've seen Robert Kent rattled. He threw some balls that we haven't seen come out of his hand here tonight so far in that last drive. Yeah, you go back to the fourth down play that Robert Kent had. He he was pressured, but he had a clean, clean step up and throw, and it came up 10 yards short of his wide receiver. There's the kick by Allen. It's a low line drive kick, and once again, goes right into the bread basket of Solomon. Frankie Solomon now hops up off his knees. He's going to return it again, giving the Revolution pristine field position at the 18 yard line. I think if you got to point at one guy right now, Brian, for this Texas Revolution team, it's Frankie Solomon on the special teams. He's been stepping up, and, and again, it's he's really that time he. Didn't get it as clean as he has before some of the other players, but his reaction to be able to pick it up quickly and start that return was priceless, and, and it gets good field position for Texas. So the Texas Revolution now finding themselves down by six with four and a half minutes left to go here in the third. Three receivers left-hand side. Robert Kent pitches right. It's a naked pitch to Dominic Carson. He runs into the pile. Now he spins off. He's going to be taken down by Latimer, and Jake Latimer will tackle Dominic Carson at the 12. Those two get up. They show mutual respect for each other, and that's classic Dominic Carson. We've seen it time and time again. He ends up in a crowd, somehow spins his way out of it, and takes what would have been a one-yard gain forward for a six-yard gain. Yeah, just so elusive coming out of the backfield. It looked like a gain of nothing. He makes one little spin move to get a missed tackle, and, and six yards up the field he goes. Two receivers in motion. Again, might have been offsides for the Revolution. They go to Carson again, and this time he's going to be taken down by Javier Dyer. Dyer will tackle Carson. No gain on the play. Now that brings up third down and a long four. I haven't called Javier's name much tonight, but a great, you know, got rid of the center playing there, and Dominic tried to get the spin move put on him, but Javier was there quick enough so D.C. couldn't make a move on him. 40 to 34. It's a big third down for the Revolution. Robert Kent back to pass. He's being chased again by the Liberty defense. Takes a hit from Dyer and Latimer's. He lets that ball go and a touchdown for the Revolution. You can't talk enough about the composure of Robert Kent, and they're just dodging bullets all around him. Actually was hit twice, once by Dyer, once by Latimer's. He spun and let that football go, and it still ends up being a touchdown for the Revolution. Yeah, he got bounced there like a pinball. Just nobody could bring him down. His, his eyes down the field the whole time. You know, I had Jeremiah Eaton that snuck behind the defensive backs in the corner of the end zone, but great poise as Kent's been under pressure you know, a whole lot tonight by Latimer and Taylor, and it's just the perseverance he has to keep his eyes down the field. Extra point pending, trying to break this tie by Denavon. His extra point off the upright on the left post, and that ball is dead, and we remain at a 40-40 <laughs> tie. What a game. Media timeout, 3-12 left to go in the third. We're tied at 40. Here at Tony's Pizza, Vince Center, and Salina, the Revolution of Liberty. More coming up on KINA. Ava, why are you sitting in Mom's car? Because, Noah, I'm hungry. And every Monday we go to Rib Crib, where kids 12 and under eat free all day. Ava. Mom and Dad love their menu, and I like the ribs. Ava. They get my fingers gooey. <laughs> Ava. What, Noah? I like Mondays at Rib Crib, too. But today's Saturday. You're just a couple of days away. Two free kids' entrees with each adult entree purchase all day Mondays at Rib Crib in Salina on South 9th in front of Lowe's. Salina Used Cars presents a new way to drive. The smart folks at Salina Used Cars are always working to put you in more car for less money. Twice the selection with two lots, and now they bring you a new leasing option. It's the smarter way to drive. Pick the quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV you love and build equity faster. Avoid trading and resale risks and avoid costly repairs if something goes wrong. WACC dealer for details. Stop by their two lots in Salina just off the corner of Crawford in Ohio or visit online at salinausedcars.com. 
PRP, or platelet-rich plasma injection therapy, has received quite a bit of attention since it's used by many professional athletes. Professional football players like Peyton Manning and Des Bryant have used PRP therapy for sports injuries and to avoid surgery. But you don't have to be a world-class athlete with millions of dollars for this cutting-edge therapy. PRP is available to you in the Salina Pain Clinic. Call the doctors for a consultation and see if this treatment is right for you. See them at 200 South 5th in the Salina Surgical Arts Center. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. A couple of scores to pass along to you from Champions Indoor Football Action tonight. The Oklahoma Flying Aces in their home debut. In Enid, they lead the Wichita Force at halftime 20-13. to 13. Also, another game going on right now in Champions Indoor Football is the Sioux City Bandits and the Omaha Beef. Last check of that game, Sioux City running away with it, 33 to 14. That score right now with Sioux City out in front of Omaha. So if that score remains, Brian, even with predetermined circumstances, Omaha may not go undefeated this year. That wouldn't hurt any of our feelings, would it? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, sorry I had to take I had to get that in there real quick. This game has been sensational by the way. 40 to 40 if you're just joining us. 312 left to go. Those other two scores, I can't imagine anybody else tuning into another game. These two two teams are really battling it out. A lot of respect for the revolution amongst the Liberty coaches and players. They know that this team is not that far removed from a championship in CIF. Just a really weird schedule for him last year. Here's the kickoff taken by Ed Smith at the back of the end zone with his back. Just outside of the 10 yard line. We talked about the schedule in pregame. Nine games last year for the Texas Revolution, who started their season 0 and 5 and still made the playoffs. Of course, they had a little bit of a coaching. The fisher man joining the team a little bit longer than expected. He was originally supposed to be the head coach of the Eagle. Can't return here for the Liberty Women's Sports Athletic Ability. He said, from what I heard from that, say, the new official. And it's your side. smile. This month, and he's going to make it down inside the 10-yard line to the 8. So Tracy Brooks continues to carry the ball, and it doesn't really seem like they've picked out a weakness or a targeted area, if you will, Russ, for this running place. He's been running all over the field, left, right. We've seen him on some delays, on some kind of belly handoffs, if you will. And he's a... Uh, that was a hard-earned two yards because he gave Frankie Solomon a shot with his shoulder pads right in the gut. 
is Jackson now back to pass. It's a second down and eight. Finds Brooks out in the flat, wide open. He was camping in the second level. He'll make it down to the five. That'll bring up now third down and three coming up for the Liberty as they are just outside of the red zone. Ball sitting on the five-yard line. Really, Andrew had two options there. You know, dump it down, dump it down to Tracy Brooks, which, you know, a good game. Or he could have just pointed and had Tracy pick that guy up because there was nobody else out there besides Tracy Brooks and that one defender. Last 90 seconds of the third quarter. 40 to 40 is our score. Motion on the left hand side. Here's Jackson. He dives. Has the first down. He's down inside the two yard line. And Andrew Jackson again. We haven't seen him run at all in the first two games. Actually, two and a half games. First option play. And now he runs for Herschel for the first goal from the moment of Liberty. And he got, he got hit up two or three times up against the board down there, but you go look at it, he still hasn't hit the turf yet, to, uh, whether it be sack or on a run play. And son the one, Jeff Bro, he stops, sets on the accelerator, goes to the hole, and he scores, but a flag down from the defense of the secondary. And they're going to say holding, maybe against an offensive lineman here, Brian. That would explain why there was such a, as big a hole as there was for Tracy Brooks to get through. Looks like it's going to go against Kelvin McCoy. The center for the Liberty. We never talk about Kelvin. Kelvin is a great individual. He has just a super spirit, a super attitude. But we never say his name, and that's a good thing when you're a center. Because that means you're not screwing up, Russ. Yeah, because you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to do that being... You know, he's, a, he's, the, he's the leader of that offensive line, and like you said, he is just a super guy, great to talk to. From the 11, it's first and goal now. Clock continuing to run down as we near the end of the third quarter. Here's Jackson. He wants to run again. He has a blocker out in front with Matthew Craig, and we're going to have another flag, this one from the umpire standing in the offensive backfield. And again, Calvin McCoy turning around with his palms towards the ceiling here, asking why is that flag, and the official says holding Salina. So now the penalties, after biting the revolution to start this drive, piling up against Salina. Salina got 30 yards worth of penalties against the revolution to start this drive on a unsportsmanlike conduct and then a face mask. And now we have back-to-back -back holding calls against the Liberty. Yeah, a holding call on Kelvin McCoy on that one. And they called that this call on Anthony Jones on the outside. Um, just, just a tough play there as it looked like from up here it was a dead run for Andrew Jackson the whole time he never really looked to pass and he's getting positive yards on these designated runs like you said we don't we haven't seen that this year yet gotta hurry up to get this one off and they will not that is the end of the third quarter and now the Liberty will regroup here as we go to the fourth and final quarter we're all knotted up 40 to 40 is our score the Liberty with the football first and goal from the 16 when we come back you're listening Champions Indoor Football right here on KINA. If you're sprucing up your home this spring, think about your garage door. In most cases, your garage door is 50% of your home's front facade, and it's your home's smile. This month, when you buy a new garage door with windows, overhead door will throw in decorative inserts for free. Many styles to choose from. So take a look at your garage door. Now make that call to Overhead Door Company of North Central Kansas in Salina and McPherson or see them online, odcnck.com. Think about the word precision. Precision represents quality and the fact of being exact and accurate. Isn't that what you want when it comes to electrical? Precision Electrical Contractors in Salina brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in Central Kansas since 2003. Precision Electric's focus on quality and performance, combined with their experience and dedication, creates a winning set of finished products which saves their customers money. Don't rely on so-so electrical. Visit the team at Precision Electrical Contractors online at PECSalina.com. You're listening to Chapman. Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Welcome back to Tony's Pizza Event Center. Devin Haney along with Russ Kossel in the booth, Brian Berner on the field, and Big Sam Pretty producing and engineering Champions Indoor Football. It's week number three for the Salina Liberty, looking to make it two in a row here at home after dropping their season opener 
on the road against the Amarillo Venom. Right now, first and goal after the Liberty had it first and goal inside the one. They have been backed up now on back-to-back -back holding calls. Now it's first and goal at the 16-yard line. Flipping fields, now they're going to score over on the right-hand side as we view it here at Tony's Pizza Event Center. It's on the red and white stripe side. Pass right in the middle of the field. This is going to go to Anthony Jones. Jones set down right in the middle of the coverage. He is going to be whistled down at the nine-yard line where it is now second down and goal from the nine. We're going to see hurry up out of Salina again. It seemed to work in the first half. Chop that field in half on that play. Now second goal from the nine. Four wide receivers, empty backfield for Jackson. He gets rid of it early again, but it's knocked down by Hendricks on that defensive line for the Texas Revolution. He was able to read that play, got his hands up in the passing lane, and knocked down that quick slant opportunity for the Salina Liberty, which now will bring up third down. And it's a good thing he got up and knocked that down because Anthony Jones ran the exact same route about seven yards and just a quick little a button hook turnaround sit down and he was wide open as a defender just kept running towards the back of the end zone. So a good play by Hendricks to get his hands up right there. Third down and goal from the nine. Two receivers, left-hand side. Brooks in the backfield. They're going to fake it to Brooks. Go to the back of the end zone and nobody home there for the Liberty. Intended receiver was Rashad Pargo, but that one went high and outside of Pargo. And now that will bring up fourth down. It's curious here to see what maybe Huron O'Neill will undo. He has been leaning more towards keeping the offense on the field other than kicking field goals in this situation so far in 2019. And it looks like the same here as Andrew Jackson remains on the field. Yeah, we see Jimmy Allen pull a cup. You know, pull one extra point. So it's kind of in a bad spot on the field here at the nine-yard line to see what you want to do on a big fourth down. Fourth and goal to nine. Two receivers on each side. The slot receivers, Pargo and Jones, will be in motion. Jackson, clean pocket, wants to slant over the middle, has Tracy Brooks at the two, and they're going to be short. At the two-yard line is where Tracy Brooks was hit and dropped by the defensive back and three different times now. On fourth down, the Liberty have been turned away. They are 0 for 3 on fourth down conversions and turnover on downs. Now with three of them in this game, that is tied, Brian. Well, it turns the ball over. And uh, you, thinking back throughout this whole game, I think this will be the worst starting position that Texas has had. Play was stopped on the uh, fourth and goal at the two. But since you cannot start inside the five yard line, Texas will have it first and ten at their own five. That is a great point. Worst field position of the night for the Revolution. They start out at the five-yard line. And Travis Taylor, Chris Mays, Jake Latimer, the front three for the Liberty. Dominic Carson, a short set right behind Robert Kent. He's going to help block. Here comes Latimer. Kent gets rid of it. It's complete to a receiver who beat the Liberty defensive back. Still running in the secondary. Out in the second level. Still going. All the way down to the 18-yard line is Brett Reese, Jr. Boy, he has come up big on some catches tonight. And that gets the revolution out of the danger zone for the Liberty defense. And now the Liberty have to bow up a little bit here and keep the revolution out of the end zone. That was a huge play by Reese from his quarterback, Robert Kent. And the ball came out of his hand funny. It looked like it was going to drop short, and the, the defensive back kind of kind of pulled on the brakes a little bit. And, was, you know, Reese was able to catch it and get up the field for a great game. First down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Slip screen, Carson in a little bit of traffic. Brock Long can't get the tackle. Carson still on his feet, still in a convoy. Inside the five, touchdown, Revolution. A two-play drive in Texas back out in front. 46 to 40 on the screen play from Dominic Carson. Carson now with four touchdowns on the night. Just can't say enough good things about Dominic Carson. Jake Latimer had a beat on came right there to, to take him down and you know, flipped it right out to Dominic and he broke four or five tackles right there and had two guys spun around. I had no idea where he was at. Just a, a great you know, 100% effort from D.C. there to get in the end zone. Second touchdown of the second half by the Texas Revolution. And now they will go for the extra point. Texas having trouble getting the right personnel on the field, and for some reason the official reset the play clock. 
They're running out of time. I'm not sure why he made that decision. Brad Dunnervon. And he's had a strange night tonight. Had a couple blocked, missed a couple. And this placement is down, the kick is up, and this time it's perfect. Dominic Carson and Brock Long have a little extra go at it. As they're quickly separated by Jake Latimer and Aeneas Ruiz, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah, you know, the two guys that have been going at it all night got them separated, and, and Jake Latimer probably saved Carson right there because I'm not sure Brock Long <laughs> is one guy you want to run into at 5'11", 210, and Dominic... And a bad attitude. Yeah, and a bad attitude. <laughs> and Dominic probably doesn't know much about Brock. They weren't here together on this team last year. Brock actually took the year off last year, Brian, to do some coaching at Fort Hayes State University as alma mater. So those two missed each other by one year. Well, they did, but you've, you've got to go back. I think the year prior, you've got to go back and uh, remember where Dominic was, whether it was Dodge City or Sioux, Sioux City, City yeah. or yeah. wherever City. it might have been in his trek around the league that the two have crossed paths for sure 47 to 40 now our score the revolution take advantage of really good field or excuse me the turnover on downs not good field position but doesn't matter they go down the field 45 yards in two plays and the key and, play on that drive was brett reese jr's reception yeah and, and, and rush you mentioned that on that long reception that the ball came out funny it did because Kent was actually hit as he was releasing the ball. And the uh, umpire was right behind me, and he goes, ball's in play, ball's in play. Because, you know, it was going forward, but uh, that would have explained the strange rotation. So, you know, great concentration by the receiver to turn it into a big play. 11.49 left to go. The Revolution now this time with the ball right dead center of the field. Dunnerbot's going to kick this football away. It's a high end over end kick taken by Smith. Six yards deep in the end zone. Picking through some traffic. He's going to come out to about the eight yard line where he is brought down there. Good coverage that time by the Revs. Coming in on coverage, Clifton Rhodes along with LaDon Hudson. You guys, we got to say for as poorly as Dunnerbot has been on his, his point afters, his kickoffs have been outstanding tonight. He yeah. is really taking advantage. And we watched during pregame. He was hitting the ceiling, and when you, you look back, he was kind of judging how high he could get it because he's putting that as high up as he can go and dropping it back in the back of the end zone. It's a good point. 47 to 40 is our score. The Liberty is trailing by seven. They're back out onto the field here with 11.29 left to play in this game. It's been a really, really good contest back and forth. The only double-digit lead was the Revolution back in the first half. This line of those been right there the whole time. Here's Jackson uncorking one on first down, going down the sideline, and it is incomplete as he had two receivers. I almost beg to wonder there if one of the receivers didn't run the wrong route. You never want to have two receivers on top of each other like that, especially 40 yards downfield. Yeah, Andrew had a guy, in it, a defender in his face, and nose tackle made a good play on Kelvin and got around him because he couldn't see Rashad Pargo had – had the defender beat about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage and, and burned him by five yards in just a late pickup. Second down and 10 now, all three receivers on the left-hand side. They're gonna sneak into the belly of Brooks. Here comes Tracy again. Hit high, hit low around the belly, and he is going to make it out to the 12. It's a four-yard gain on second down, and after that incomplete pass on first down, we'll bring up third down and six. Big third down play here for the Liberty. You talk about being down seven. You go back to the to the the last touchdown drive, and the biggest play might be Donovan's extra point finally going in. Right. Liberty come to the line of scrimmage now. Two receivers on the right hand side. Brooks remains in the backfield. Jackson sends him in motion. Now he has to dance around a little bit. We're going to have a flag in the offensive backfield. Jackson's going to let it fly to the end zone, and it is over the outstretched fingertips. Of Rashad Pargo. Now we have a punch thrown by one of the Texas Revolution players. Wow, I'm not sure what materialized down there, but I just saw Anthony Webb Ooh. throw a punch at one of the Liberty players who's not in uniform. I don't even know if that's a player or not. There's a lot of extracurricular down there, Brian, in your neighborhood. 
Yeah, they're pointing out one of the, I, I, I'll be honest, it's one of the uh, reserves who was kind of over in the bench area. I was blocked, not being able to see what exactly was going on, but one of the officials was kind of pointing, hey, you need to get out of the area. So we'll see. It looks like the flag, though, came earlier on in the route. So I don't know whether we'll have one of those illegal holds or what it's going to be. The back judge is still kind of pointing over in towards the Liberty bench area. It appeared to me, Brian, that the, the couple guys on the bench that were trying to help Rashad Pargo after he went over the wall to keep him from falling, and number four, Anthony Webb for Texas, just came over, and I'm sure it was w warranted, you know, the, the confrontation back and forth. You don't ever want to point fingers at one guy or the other because we can't see the whole thing from up here, but it appeared that the Liberty bench was just trying to catch Rashad Pargo as he went up and over the wall as he went into their bench, and it appears to be the Revolution guys are down there trying to say that they were throwing punches over there first. But I go back to, though, when you look at the rules, does it matter? Here's the thing I'm saying, Brian. When you look at the rule book, it is Anthony Webb threw a punch, period. It doesn't matter why he threw the punch. It doesn't matter where the provoke came from. It is he threw a punch, period. What is the rule? I mean, we could clearly see it up here that he reared back and took a full swing. Two officials, the back judge and the line judge, standing right next to him. Wow, okay. Nonetheless, it's fourth down here. <laughs> Basically, the officials are going to say, we don't know what to do. We're just going to go to fourth down. I mean, that's pretty much what we've That's exactly done what happened. That's how I see it. Fourth down and six. Now coming up for the Liberty. They have three receivers on the right-hand side. Tracy Brooks in the backfield with Andrew Jackson. Here's the shotgun snap. Pass out to Ed Smith, and it is called incomplete. Ed Smith ran the perfect route. The sticks were at the 19 and a half. He went to the 20, and Brian, it looked like that came through his hands as he was trying to complete that pass. Brian can't hear us. Yes. 47 to 40 now, another turnover on downs. Four turnover on downs tonight for the Salina Liberty. And right now, that's the difference in this game as the Liberty have come away on four different turnover on downs. They trail 47 to 40, and we are at another media timeout. Nine minutes left to go. Media timeout. Revolution with the ball in really good field position, leading by seven when we come back. When you hire street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. time is car time. Whether you've got your return or just filed your return, good credit, bad credit, no credit, no, no worries. worries. At Abilene Car Sales, use your return and pay nothing else out of pocket. Tax time is car time at Abilene Car Sales on Northwest 3rd in Abilene or online at abilenecarsales.com. The name is JJ Lawn Care, but don't let the name fool you. It's not just lawns they care about, it's their customers. JJ Lawn Care is a locally owned business that works with people in and around Salina on more than just lawns. The spring season is here, and now's the time to act for a healthy, lush lawn. Call now for a free estimate on a four or six step program. Let JJ Lawn Care come to the rescue for your fescue. Mm -hmm. Give them a call today, 820 7728. JJ Lawn Care, caring for more than just your lawn. Salina Sports Station is KINA. Down to the nine-minute mark now of this football game and all the momentum. All of a sudden, the side of the Texas Revolution, they lead 47-40 to 40 with 8.55 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And a turnover on downs for the Liberty. Give the Revolution the ball back to the 15. Here's Dominic Carson. Pitch out left-hand side. Travis Taylor. 
not to come up and pursue him. He gets him at the six yard line, and that will be a gain of about seven and a half, eight yards for Dominic Carson. Interesting there is the left tackle kind of pulled out and gave a little kick out block and about took about took the helmet off of Travis Taylor. You know, I had him up under there. And another thing we noticed here is we got Javier Dyer out there on the other side of Taylor and Jake Latimer not out there right now. So it's Dyer and Taylor with Mays in the middle. Eight minutes left to go. Second down and three. Here's the give to Carson. He has to run around Detroit Matthews and Carson. I think brought down up against the wall by Brock Long once again. And Carson gets up shaking his head in disbelief. Not sure what happened there. I couldn't see because of the wall. It looked like Dietre tripped him up just enough, you know, on that corner safety blitz out here on the near side as we're looking at it. Big third and third and a long one here for Texas. Third down and one. I formation, they sneak it to the defensive lineman, and it looks like he has enough. It's Undra Hendricks. Hope I'm pronouncing his first name right. He got the little fullback gift that time. We don't see that very often, that he got just enough to move the chains and get a first down for the Texas Revolution. Now it's first and goal for the Revolution at the three-yard line. That is a big man to be running the football, but nonetheless, he was met by Brock Long after he just got past the first down and, and Brock Long put him right back where he came from but just after he got past the sticks. First down and goal now for the Revolution. They're gonna give it to Carson. Carson hit early but he skips right past the defense and then gets hammered. Dominic Carson in perfect Carson form showed off a little bit too early and he got leveled but still scored a touchdown. Tony Rudolph almost took him out of the air and grounded him permanently. But a two touchdown lead now for the Revolution. That was a stick. Wow, what a hit, but what a move by Carson. Just just to make that one little miss. I mean, he was dead to rights right there, and they had him stop for about a two yard loss. And he just shakes free and, you know, high steps it maybe a little early to the end zone, but nonetheless, he got in the end zone. So with 6.39 left to go, the Revolution now. Still taking an eternity. Trying to line up for their extra point. Reset the play clock three times there to let them get right. enough people on the field, and then they had too many. Called illegal substitution on the Revolution. So that'll back them up a little bit. Back to the seven yard line. Now the placement for the Zetterbach kick will be coming back from the 14. Kicking out of the hold of Frankie Solomon Jr. Trying to make this a 14 point lead. Snap is good, placement is down, and the kick is up and no good. Another no good extra point by the Texas Revolution, but they still lead here by Baker's dozen, 53 to 40 with 6.39 left to go here in the fourth quarter. This, just some questionable, you know, questionable play calls there, to, or play calls, questionable calls down here in the end zone on, on the other end back, nonetheless a, a 13 point lead. We have special teams has been big with the missed extra points and you know, with Donovan's kickoffs, you know, we're, we're up here eye level with about the ceiling of the Tony's Pizza Event Center, and he is scaling it just right. Like Brian said, he was out here warming up before the game, and he was hitting the ceiling and then missing and then hitting, and just judging where he could get so far, he, he's been absolutely perfect. So let's see if, if Salina can get a return put together because when they've had a chance to return the football on a kickoff, it's just, you know, 5, 10, 15 yards. And you see, that except for the one Tracy Brooks got his hand on where he took it back to the house, I, I was going to well, I was gonna say see if they brought Tracy Brooks back deep, but they're going to leave uh, Ed Smith back, it appears. It'll be Smith back deep along with Tracy Brooks in front of him. Also hanging out in the area is Anthony Jones. Dunderbond 
has the ball right in the middle of the field. Right on the hash, he's going to kick this one high, right off the rafter, just barely grazed by to Ed Smith in the end zone. Ed's going to bring this one out to the nine, and again, kicking game, very good by the Revolution. Coverage, even better, and with 6.31 left to go here in the fourth quarter, it is 53-40, to 40, Texas leading by 13, Salina with the football. Right now, it's been a 13-0 run by the Revolution here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's tough here. We'll, let's see what what Coach Ron can draw up here. Is, is Andrews had plenty of time to throw. It seemed his receivers have maybe been miscommunicating a little bit. You know, Rashad's ran by his guy two or three times on the last possession. He just wasn't picked up early enough to get the ball to him. Fifty-three forty. Here's Jackson. Back to pass. Guy in his face. He's going to go down and nearly caught, but then it comes free. And is that an interception? Boy, I can't see. We have two Liberty receivers down. The officials aren't blowing their whistle. And now a defensive back for the Revolution trying to return it to the house. And he gets in. A ball that went off two Liberty players, it looked like. Maybe even had glanced off the wall. And now it's going to be returned all the way back the other way by Trey Colbert. Got a flag af afterwards. I'm not quite sure. I can't really see down there because, you know, the wall's in the way of where we're at. But, you know, they, they throw a flag on the celebration there. And I, I can't quite tell who the receiver was down there. It looked like Rashad Pargo was taken out well before the ball even got there. And nothing was called. Yeah, that's we've seen some really weird plays in this game. And that's just going to add on to it now. The Texas Revolution are going to take a 19-point lead, 59-40, to 40, with 5.55 left to go. And that's the first turnover in the last two games for Andrew Jackson. And what's even worse about that, the fans start to hit the aisles a little bit as they're wanting to get out of here. They think this one's over. Just a tough play. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to see. It, it hit two, three guys, and then it looked like it went off the wall, and the player just stopped in the end zone, the, and the officials didn't blow the whistle or nothing. So, so he just took off and... Just an un unfortunate deal there. 59 to 40, our score. Dennervant back on for another extra point attempt. The extra point game tonight for the Revolution's been rough. But this one is up and right down the middle. 60 to 40 now. Salina down by 20 with 5.55 left to go. Let's take a 60 second timeout. Back with more indoor football after this on KINA. Area athletes and even weekend warriors have a big home field advantage. Salina Regionals Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. Working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries or to heal through surgery and rehabilitation. You can count on Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Timothy Hawks and sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle. Along with an A-team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at SalinaRegionalSportsMedicine.com. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. After being tied 40 to 40 at the end of the third quarter, this one has gone all revolution now as they have scored two offensive touchdowns and a defensive touchdown off of a pick six and taken a 20 point lead 60 to 40 with 5.55 left to go. Just a tough, tough change of pace right there when you come out. You know, the third quarter seemed to be going in Salina's way, and then you come into the fourth quarter and it's just boom, 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 just like that, it's 20 points. Well, remember back, Russ, turnovers on downs, 40 to 40. You have one, then you're down by a touchdown, you have another one, and that's kind of where we're at right now, and I don't know if that football is going to come down out of the Raptors. There, it finally did. Dunderbot put that one up there in the ceiling, and it finally did come down, but that's the first time he's done that tonight. As Brian was talking about, he did it repeatedly 
as he was taking the temperature of the ceiling, so to speak, in warm-ups. So this one will start at the 25-yard line. Finally, some good field position here for first line as they'll get it at. Be the 25-yard line. They'll put it down here. Uh, it appears to be they're going to about the 13-yard oh, line. We had a penalty on that ah, touchdown that we didn't go. know what happened, so we never got a call on that. So obviously against the Texas Revolution, as it's going to be assessed now after the kick. So, yeah, the Liberty will start out here. They'll have the football at the 12-and-a-half-yard line in Texas territory. Tracy Brooks in the backfield along with Andrew Jackson in the shotgun formation. Two receivers in motion that go simple screen out to Matthew Craig and he is going to make it to the 11 yard line I believe before he is whistled dead there on forward progress. Scooter Rogers the first defensive back to show up there for the revolution. Yeah, good tackle by Scooter Rogers there. Matthew Craig had plenty of separation on just the stop route. Andrew Jackson got the ball out quick. Just, just a great open field tackle to not allow him to gain any farther than where he did. Five minutes left to go here in this game. Jackson now will empty the backfield. Two receivers on each side. Here's the snap. Flags fly into the back of the end zone again. Pargo up over the wall. Caught safely this time and no extracurricular activity by the Revolution or the Liberty, but we have two flags on the field. Well, you had the, the nose guard stand up and scream, oh, oh, as we could see before the ball was snapped, and there was no flags before that until after he said something, so we'll see what the White Hat calls right here. Illegal defense on the Revolution. When you don't know what to call, call, it call illegal. illegal defense. Second down and eight now. We'll turn into a second down and three. On the five-yard penalty, the play doesn't count. And that'll be beneficial for the Liberty. Clock, though, continuing to roll. 4.45 left to go here in this football game. Tracy Brooks will be in the backfield. Two receivers on the left-hand side with Jones and Craig. Now Brooks will join them. Snap back to Jackson. He goes to Pargo, and Pargo hit high and hit low. Timing was very good, if not early, by the Revolution, but it looked like they timed that one right on the arrival of the football. And that goes incomplete. Now it brings up a third down and three. Yeah, just an awkward position there for Pargo to be put in when he went up to go catch the ball. You know, both defenders, he had one on his feet, and the safety coming down on him, you know, they try to go one-on-one -on -one and split three on, on the far side of the field and try to go one-on-one -on -one to Rashad over here and just, just unable to make the catch. So a third down, the play now coming up for the Liberty. Here's the delay handoff to Brooks. Tracy, very close to a first down. The ball came out, but after he had already hit the turf, it looks like he's going to be about a half a yard shy. They'll bring a fourth down in less than a yard. Back to fourth down, and you, you know, fourth and less than a yard, but 0 for, 0 for 4 tonight on, on fourth downs, you know, coming up with nothing. Coming in 5 of 6 on fourth down, so, you know, just a, a big play here to keep the game alive right here. Another big fourth down. Three receivers on the left-hand side. Jackson throws it up top to Craig, and that big frame, he goes up and hauls it in, and a touchdown for the big... Wide receiver, Matthew Craig. And he spikes that football to the ground. And it goes into the fourth row. Yeah. <laughs> His first touchdown of the year. Which is hard to believe because yeah. when you get down in the red zone that much, and you know, at 6'5 and 240, he's, he's such a mismatch for defensive backs in this league that you just wonder why he doesn't get that, the targets more often. 3.07 left to play. Jimmy Allen on now to try to cut this to 13. Snap by Kevin McCoy a little bit outside. Brooks, though, does a good job putting it back in. And the kick is good by Jimmy Allen. 3.07 left to go. Here's a 60-second timeout. Back with more indoor football after this. 
The spring season is here and paintball fun is waiting for you at Elite Sports. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, five miles south of Salina, is open for the season. Get the group together and visit Elite Sports on Saturdays and Sundays during the spring and check out their new online booking system. Elite Sports features new low-impact paintballs for beginners or little ones so everyone can have more fun. Visit them online at salinapaintballcomplex.com. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, open and waiting for you this weekend. It's spring cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean and check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape, so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters for you. Follow us on social media for your chance to win a free clean and check appointment today. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. 3.07 left to go. A touchdown by the Liberty. Trim that 20-point Texas Revolution lead back down to a breakers, Baker's dozen, excuse me, 60-47. to 47. Other score updates going on right now from Sioux City. The Omaha Beef have scored. They've pulled back to within 15. It's 40-25. to 25. Sioux City leading in that one. Jimmy Allen ready to dispatch his coverage team here. Obviously, Salina want to get the football back as soon as they can. They're going to put everybody over on the left-hand side. And Jimmy Allen, a little bit of an onside kick, if you will. And it's only going to make it to the 10-yard line where it falls right into the bread basket of the second tier, one of the return men, Frankie Solomon Jr. And I know that's not a surprise. He has really set the tone offensive, or excuse me, on special teams here tonight for the Revolution. He's been a huge difference in this game. So that will give Texas a short field here. With 3.03 left to go, 60-47, to 47, Revolution leading with the football. Yeah, you talk about Frankie Solomon Jr. there coming up, and he he's returned the last four or five kickoffs, and they've been hard ones, and he just soft hands come right to him. And, of course, they do an onside kick, and surprise, surprise, Frankie comes up with it again. So the Revolution, see what they choose to do here offensively. They're going to dispatch three wide receivers, including Dominic Carson, to the left-hand side. Clinton Solomon, a solo, over to the right-hand side. The give on the jet sweep goes to Carson, and he's going to stick his head in there, get maybe three yards, and that will bring up second down and goal from the seven. What a hard hitting going on on the inside there. On that carry by Dominic Carson. A great play by Latimer. The right tackle of Ruiz again had him had him turned around and Latimer was able to peel off and kind of do a complete 180 and come back and Carson was right there for him to take down to save a potential touchdown. Second down and goal from the seven, approaching the two minute mark of this one. It's a 13 point revolution lead. Directing traffic, it's Robert Kent. Here comes Carson now on a fake. Latimer's gonna slam him anyway. And now Kent has to let go of that oh. football. And now they're going to call a personal foul. It's going to be a late hit called on Brock Long. The helmet came off of Robert Kent. I don't know who the equipment manager is for this Revolution team, but they may have to check the straps of these helmets for the Revolution. We've seen them lose a lot of headgear tonight. And you could see that Brock Long's been kind of getting into it with, with, with players on the last two or three drives, and Latimer's been trying to calm him down. And that time, you know, Brock just... <laughs> Just couldn't hold it back anymore and had it and took one shot on Kent well after the ball was thrown way up into the stands. So that'll make it first and goal now for the Revolution. They will have the line of scrimmage just outside of the three yard line as we now work our way towards the 60 second warning mark. 151 left to play. I know it's not over yet, but. The Liberty want to play on. They might have to get a stop right here. They will have to get a stop right here. High formation once again. They're going to try to pass it an offensive lineman, and they do get it in the end zone. There's a couple of flags on the play, though, as we'll have to see what's being unhashed here. Yeah, you know, you see an offensive lineman come down. He is the one that declared to be a receiver when he came out. It, you know, he stuck his arm up on that play, and Brock Long complaining about maybe he got held, but...
So it's illegal defense against number eight, which is Travis Taylor, which I don't know how you can call defense illegal defense on the defensive end. We may have to explore that more. And then a chop block, illegal block against Dominic Carson, offsetting penalties there. And all that's going to do is just take more time off this clock. Now down to 133 left to play. Again, the Revolution looting by 13. High formation once again. They're going to give it to the fullback, the first man through once again, and Undra Hendricks scores his second touchdown of the game on that little fullback sneak, and now we're going to have penalties flying on the Revolution after Hendricks spikes the football and it goes into the stands. Cannot do that as a visiting team on the road. Now Hendricks drops down and does his punishment push-ups. Well, if you want to call him push-ups, say <laughs> He's a big guy, so I don't know if he can, he, you know, he got short arms maybe. He can't get up and down that much. But nonetheless, he's, that is a tank to try to tackle coming in from three yards out. Not very tall. He's only 5'11", but he's 285. He's Every bit of it. a defensive lineman, but he gets in there now, and that's a second carry for a touchdown tonight. Extra point pending here by the Revolution. Snap is good, hold is down, and the kick is up and good. 67-47, Texas Revolution. Chew up some time, they go back up by 20, and with 121 left to go, we'll take a little time out here. 60 seconds, then back with more Liberty football after this on KINA. Salina, get ready for WWE Live. Monday night, May 27th at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Randy Orton battles AJ Styles. Plus, Oscar defends the SmackDown Women's Championship against Mandy Rose with Sonya Deville. Then you'll see the Usos, The New Day, Ricochet and Aleister Black, Rusev with Lana, and Shinsuke Nakamura in a battle for the Tag Team Championship and more. Don't wait. Great seats are available now at the box office and Tony's Pizza Event Center.com. Have you thought about upgrading your vehicle but hate spending all day at a dealership that does not value your time? Hi, Chris Sherbring with Bennett Buick GMC, personally inviting you in to see how car buying should be. With our no-pressure, non-commissioned sales staff, our upfront pricing, and an award-winning service department, I am confident you will choose us for your next vehicle. Our best price guarantee and high trading values, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. Stop in and see us at 651 South Ohio or visit us on the web 24 hours a day at BennettBuickGMC.com. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Let's go. 121 left to play. 81 seconds on the clock, and it's 67-47, the Texas Revolution. They are looking to start the season 2-0 after starting the 2018 campaign 0-5. And this will be a big win, Russ, for the Revolution just because both of their first two games on the road here in Kansas. They beat Wichita last week. They can hang on and get this one here tonight, which looks like they're going to. Starting 2-0 and on the road, it's a pretty good turnaround. And we know this Revolution team, not the character that we saw to them last year, starting 0-5, but we also talked about how jacked up their schedule was too. Nine games combined against Duke City and Amarillo. Here's the return by Ed Smith Jr. Found a crease in the middle of the field. He's going to barrel it out to the 20-yard line where he is tackled by Frankie Solomon Jr. Whenever there's a good special teams play made for the Revolution now, I'm just going to call up the Solomon. If he doesn't, <laughs> he's got my vote. So, I mean, we haven't seen any plays from the other game. I haven't watched anything. But, you know, you talk about special teams players of the week usually being, you know, a kicker, you know, going perfect from extra points or, or an yeah. electric returner from, you know, at getting 100 yards returning. This guy has caught and tackled everything. And that's really kind of the unfortunate thing about that special teams player of the week. It usually goes to a return guy that got a bunch of touchdowns or a kicker. You're right. Play like this, though, it changes the game. I mean, it really, really changes the game. He's been in on every tackle, even on the return game. He has preserved great field position for his team. He has really set the tone tonight for this Texas Revolution squad, who looks like they're going to come out of Salina with a win. Andrew Jackson trying to get a playoff here before the 60-second warning. He's going to screen out left-hand side to Tracy Brooks. Brooks will catch the football and now get three, maybe four yards. And we're going to have a late flag coming in from the back official. And they're going to call personal foul face mask. Tracy Brooks has had his face mask grabbed tonight. More than probably he's had the football, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, you should go back to what you said earlier with the equipment manager for the Revolution and all their lids flying off. 
Tracy's head is, will come off before that helmet comes off, it seems like. And you go back to, you know, how big it is for the Revolution as it looks like they're going to come out with a win here. 60-second warning is here. We'll be back to close it out. It's a 20-point Revolution lead here on KINA. Exciting memories of a lifetime ultimate entertainment for children of all ages. It's the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Three Ring Circus. Wild animals, acrobatics, tightrope walkers, clowns, all included in six job dropping performances. Shows April 12th at 2 and 7, Saturday, April 13th at 10, 2 and 7, and the 14th at 2. Fans tickets on sale now at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Come one, come all to the Salina Shrine Tarzan Zerbini Circus, the biggest and best circus in town. A1 Plumbing Services, a proud supporter of the Salina Liberty football team. A1 Plumbing makes your life easy. Competitive rates and quick response times. Plus, all work, including labor and parts, are guaranteed. A1 Plumbing is open to service 24 hours a day. New construction and remodeling are just the beginning of the many services master plumber Chris Bogan and his team perform. Save time and money with sewer camera service. Don't wait. Call A1 Plumbing, 827-4888. That's 827-4888. The Liberty plays here, here. Salinas Sports Station is KINA. 67 to 47 is our score. The Texas Revolution leading the Salina Liberty here as we enter the last minute of this contest. Liberty have the football. Just on the edge of the red zone. First down and goal. Just outside the five. Liberty will be off next week, but they'll be back in action here at home two weeks from tonight against the Wichita Force. All three receivers for Salina will be on the right-hand side. Tracy Brooks on the left hip of quarterback Andrew Jackson. Jackson back to throw. Looking right. Now he's going to scramble back to the left. Setting it up. He can't find anybody open. Now he's going to fling it to the end zone. Has a receiver and hit up over the wall. And I believe a touchdown. Yes, they're going to call it Rashad Pargo. Pargo is third touchdown of the night. And that one very patient by Andrew Jackson, who again had great protection. And Pargo goes up over the wall. He hauls it in. And that's his third touchdown of the night. So he came into this game with three touchdowns. He's going to leave with at least six. As that play took seven seconds. Now the extra point pending from Jimmy Allen. That's not the first time we've seen Pargo go over the wall for, for catches. He sells out. You know, they're down 20, but that kid's never done playing. Snap back to Tracy Brooks. Jimmy Allen's kick is up, and it's good, and that will make it now a 13-point game. 53 seconds left to go. Liberty looking like now they're going to move to 1-2 and two on the season after opening up on the road in Amarillo with a loss. And now down by 13 here to the Texas Revolution. The final stats of this game and a game, complete game wrap. Go to SalinaPost.com post game and see all the stats from this contest. Other games going on tonight. And champions indoor football. Let's take a look at those. The Omaha Beef and the Sioux City Bandits. That game has tightened up. Now it is Sioux City 40, Omaha 32. Also going on tonight, the Wichita Force is in Enid to take on the Oklahoma Flying Aces. And we have not got an update on that one since back in halftime where it was 20 to 13 Flying Aces over the Force. So. No updates there, either online on the league website or on the team Facebook pages. Fifty-three seconds left to go in this one. See if Jimmy Allen can pull the onside to kick attempt again and try to get this football back for the Salina Liberty. Even if that should happen, though, a lot of work left to do here with a 13-point deficit. This fourth quarter has just been absolutely owned by the Revolution. We thought Liberty would come out here and be able to put this one away early third quarter. They went on a 13-0 run and took a one-touchdown lead. But since being tied at 40 at the end of the third quarter, this fourth quarter has been owned by the Liberty. And it's a drop kick by Jimmy Allen. And it's going to be fielded up top by the 
Revolution? And as I told you earlier, Russ, I don't even have to say his name anymore. I'll let you say his name for once. <laughs> Frankie Solomon Jr. comes up with the onside or onside kick reception. Interesting here. You see Jimmy Allen try did the old drop kick, you know, let it hit the ground and bounced up. It actually was a great kick. Yeah. It's a great That's kick. Got a it, great bounce. On, it, honestly, if Frankie Solomon wasn't on, on all the field, they might have recovered that one. Yeah, it's just <laughs> the, the, I don't know what he puts on his gloves on kickoffs, but it's like a magnet to the ball, and he, he hasn't dropped anything all night on special teams. I've never seen one guy just miscellaneous stuff. Again, stuff that's not going to show up in the box no. score. Never seen one guy make such a difference in a game. Big respect to Frankie Solomon. 67-54 our score. The Revolution, a little pitch out here. This goes to Clinton Solomon, and Solo's going to turn around and run for a little bit of space and maybe even partially his life. As he goes back to the 17-yard line, he's going to lose five on that play. The Liberty looking to call a timeout, but they don't have to because the Revolution didn't get positive yardage. So save that timeout, guys. Put it in your pocket. Yeah, as, a, as in the indoor game, if you don't advance the football to positive yards, the clock doesn't continue to run. So you know, it's not over till it's over. 44 seconds left. but, but Channeling your best <laughs> inner Yogi Berra. I'm trying. Actually, he said he only lost two and a half on that play, which is kind of amazing. Here's the give now to Dominic Carson in the hole. Brock Long has his tackle broken. Now Carson gets back to the original line of scrimmage where he is taken down by one of the defensive backs, and the clock continues to run. Theo Johnson pointing at the clock, and the officials just kind of don't want to see if they were dumb to what was going on, but they were looking at two players and Theo Johnson, who's the defensive coordinator, trying to call timeout. They just sat there and looked at him. Yeah, because <laughs> the play clock reset at 40, and it was under 40 to go, so that the Revolution did not have to run another play. But Theo wanted to time out there to, you know, see if the defense can come up with something. You expect Texas here to just run something a little up the middle to Dominic Carson just to get some sort of positive yard so the clock runs and Salinas still got one timeout left. 31 seconds left to play as you said. Still one more Liberty timeout. It's third down and 10 here for the Revolution offense. Two receivers in motion, oh two boy. receivers offsides and Jake Latimer takes it out on the quarterback Robert Kent. And that's not a dirty play for Latimer. Of course, people are going to say, hey, you're hometown. But how do you tell Latimer, who's right now, his job is to get to the quarterback. How are you going to tell him to stop on a whistle's notice when his momentum's already going that way? Yeah, because that's not the first time that false start has happened. That's, you know, that maybe the second or third time it's been called where the center or the quarterback pull seems to pull out early or the center bobs his head and maybe moves the ball a little bit because Latimer's not one to jump off sides a lot. And if you don't want your quarterback hit in that situation, tell your receivers to not be off sides. Yeah, don't be off sides or, or, or tell the big guy up in, up in front of Latimer maybe to at least check him a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point, too. You are Your job is to block. <laughs> Here's Kent now back to pass, wants to go to the end zone. It's going to be broken up by Winston Green. Got his left hand in the passing alley that time, knocked it down to the turf, and that will bring up fourth down and 15 with 26.9 seconds left on the clock. And that play took 1.2 seconds according to the scoreboard here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. And we are going to see a field goal attempt. Of course, the Liberty playing it out here. You don't expect them to lay down. A couple of Substitutions here for both teams. Of course, Texas trying to get their kicker on. Dana Harris coming onto the field for the Salina Liberty. 67-54 is our score. Texas trying to add on to that, trying to get to the 70 mark. Play clock down to two. They still have a snap, and they snap it right at one, and it's blocked. Straight up in the air, it's going to be bouncing to Isaiah Barfield. Barfield, one of the best return guys in the league, just doesn't have any space up against that wall over there on the side. And again, I know this may be a oh, shock, but boy. Aeneas Ruiz over there, and he is giving a lot of pushing and shoving, and now there's a lot of fighting back and forth up against the wall. Well, I think originally they were 
Warren Dent Jr. come flying in there and just laid out like a missile, and that's when the flag came in, and then, and then you see a bunch more activity after that, so it'll be eager to see here. On the credentials of Frankie Solomon Jr., he is also a good fight breaker upper. He got in the middle of that <laughs> and was pushing people back both ways and broke that little tussle up. So add that onto his credentials as well. Yeah, because he has done absolutely nothing wrong tonight. And they're going to make this call. They're going to—they're actually going to throw this flag, which to me is kind of hilarious. They're going to throw this flag and say it's against Frankie Solomon, who was in there no, breaking no. it up. Who no, they, they called call it on 50, Warren Dick okay, Jr. They did call it on 50. 15. No, they said 50, not okay. 15. No, he can't get a personal foul <laughs> now. This late after he's done everything he's right. The player of the game. <laughs> exactly. So Salina does get the football back here, and now they're going to have penalty yardage on top of that, but 17.9 seconds. I think they're going to need a couple more uh, clock errors to uh, see if they can punch play, punch one in here and maybe get a, a miracle onside kick with, with if there's any time left if they get in the end zone here. Salina will put three wide receivers all out to the right-hand side. Tracy Brooks stays in the backfield. Andrew Jackson puts everybody in motion. Over the center of the field, he was looking that time for his big receiver, Matthew Craig, with that ball knocked out of flight incomplete. Update from Sioux City, 43-32. The Bandits leading Omaha. For all we know, that one could be final right now. Yeah, the updates have kind of been, we're trying to get updates. Oh, it looks like I got another one on the Wichita Force game. That's seven minutes ago, third quarter update. The Wichita Force up 27 to 26 on the Oklahoma Flying Aces on, on Oklahoma's opening home game. Three receivers again, right-hand side. Jackson back to pass again. He's going to float a screen out to Tracy Brooks, who grabs that with one hand. What a catch by Brooks, but then he paid for it as the revolution, LaDonna Hudson, came in. Yeah, he laid a stick on Tracy Brooks there on the sideline right up against the wall. And Tracy just kind of last minute turned around, put his arm up, fell right in the breadbasket that one hand, but then he took a shot. But nonetheless, great concentration. I will stop the clock with 9.1 seconds left to go. Three receivers again, right hand side. Jackson sends him in motion. He's going to the end zone, looking for Craig again. And it's knocked out of flight that time. Good coverage by Scooter Rogers. Great coverage. And Andrew Jackson's got to get that ball up to Craig. Being 6'5", you know, and probably well over, you know, he's got a huge wingspan. Just get the ball up and give him the only chance to go get it. So down to what might be our last play. Here in this one, fourth down and three. Here's Jackson rolling out, goes back across his body. I think this is intended for Ed Smith, but it ends up going to Tracy Brooks. He was running into the route, and the Liberty will score with no time left on the clock. This game will end up looking close, 67 to 60, our final score. But that is the final, and the Salina Liberty moved to one and two on the season. The Texas Revolution to two and one. Oh, 67 to 60, our final score again next week. Salina Liberty will have a bye. It will be back here at home April 20th to take on the.